We'll be diving along. Well, hello, 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 beautiful babies. Yes, we are live again with another additional like talking about it. It's your girl, Mama Fia 45 Life. And yes, we are back again, you guys, for a new episode mm -hmm. tonight, y'all. I hope y'all tap in. I got my co-host over here on this side. <laughs> I'm Melinda, everybody. There y'all go. That's Miss Melinda right there, y'all. I told y'all I was coming with a new co-host, okay? So, yeah, I got my new co-host. So, y'all, Melinda going to be here with me until she get tired of seeing my damn face. <laughs> oh, okay. And then I'm going to be back in it by myself, y'all. It ain't stopping, you know? We're going to keep the train moving. And, um, yes, you guys, thank y'all for tapping in. Let's share it, Melinda, because you say you shared it. So, I'm going to yeah, go on my phone. And I'm gonna do a little sharing and see if we can get some more people in before we even uh get is it anybody in there? I can't see nothing. I'll never be able to see if anybody in the darn room. You can't see it? No, I'll be seeing if nobody in there. Oh shoot. I don't know why. I'm gonna have to figure that out. You can't see? No. Oh. Let me turn oh Lord, am I loud? Okay, let me turn this down some. No, that was me on my phone. I thought that was my girl. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure that out. Um, I just shared it again. I heard it's it. It's two people on here, but that's only because I'm looking at Facebook, and I don't know if that counts. If that's us or somebody else, right? Oh no! <laughs> if anybody else in the room, say hello, please and thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, y'all make them come in so, so we can give y'all a big shout out. Ourselves. Okay. I think I just shared mine. And uh, the notification did pop up. Sometimes the notifications don't be popping up. But it did come through this time. I seen my notification. Did you see it? No. Okay. I don't okay, know why so. you're not. Hey, Tim. How you see that? I don't see nothing. Because oh, it's on StreamYard. So when I post it, when I post it, it's on StreamYard. It's the way that the StreamYard app is. So when they make the comment, I just post it up there on there. Oh, but you still should be able to see it. I didn't see people. Uh, I don't know why you don't see it. I see it once you pop it up though, but I don't see it in the other time. Really? We yeah. working from the both both stream yards, so I don't know why you don't see it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we got three people watching. Can y'all say a hello, please? Can y'all say a hello so we can give y'all y'all shouts out before we get on this topic that Miss Melinda has brought to the table again tonight, y'all? Let's go, Miss Melinda, coming through with the topics. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know I'm silly. Who are everybody that can watch my show before? Y'all know I'm silly. I, I am very silly, y'all. <coughs> I like to enjoy the show. Hey, uh, Tiffany. Thank you yes, for joining hey, us tonight. We we'll appreciate you. I think you are a top supporter, honey. Y'all go like and share the video too. Go like and share so we can get more people tapping in in the conversation tonight. Hello, Hello how are you? I'm glad you found it, babe. Mm -hmm. Stop sucking that cup. <laughs> Look here. Let's not talk about that like talking about it. <laughs> We're not going to do that tonight, Melinda. Okay, Girl. so... We just said our hellos. I guess other people don't want to say hello. Let's go ahead and get into this. All right, come on, because you already said you don't want to be over an hour tonight. So, y'all, we for the talk about it. Let's go, Melinda. Hit it. Okay, so I know that I said that initially our conversation will be about mental health, but I don't think everybody's ready to tackle mental health. So we're just going to keep on choking with accountability. Us as women, we have a hard time being accountable for our actions. 
it's good to have you here, Michelle. So um, we are not the best at being accountable for our actions. And a lot of times we deflect um, when we don't want to take accountability. You know, as soon as somebody say, well, you did this or you did that, the first thing you say, well, she did it too or he did it too. We're not talking about them. We're talking about you. So take accountability for what it is that you do. And um, within taking accountability, that's just within knowing who you are and not being afraid to apologize. Because a lot of times we hold ourselves accountable um, and we're our worst critics. Us as women, we are our worst critics. We never give ourselves enough credit. But then at the same time, we are the worst ones that will not apologize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, again, that goes back to being accountable. Um we sit in a lot of things that is not for us. We sit there waiting for people to change when the person that needs to change is ourselves. And then we can move accordingly. Because if it's if it's no longer feeding you, why don't you get up on the table? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh-huh. So, anyone have any questions? So, my thing is, first, I think we need to actually, ex ex just for those, I know everybody know what accountability means and being accountable for um, their own actions, but um, we're going to get a definition of being accountable, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Uh, of a person's organization or institution required or expected to justify actions or decisions, responsible. Um, and then number two is in inexplicable understanding. The delays introduction of character character's name and account is accountable. If we consider that have consider that name have a low priority. So what does that mean? Why they say that? That was a, I don't understand that example. Okay, so a lot of times us as women we are naturally nurturers and we want to fix people, right? So we find a guy, right, and we want we 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 see that um we're having a problem with accountability because we want something from somebody that we cannot receive let me break it down a little bit further so we meet a guy right and we want to fix him we know that we got our basics in line so we got our house our car our job but we'll bring somebody into our home that don't have those things. And then we want him to give us something that it wasn't required in the beginning. So when things don't work out and you say, well, I was here for him and I did this for him and I did this for him and I did this for him. Who should be accountable for it? You. You let this person do this to you. You let this person drag you. Not at one time did you see any of those red flags. Did you stop? Did you put up a boundary? Did you say, hey, I don't like that thing right there. If you continue to do this thing right here, I'm going to have to move around. Now, I'm not saying that just move around and meet they do something. No, point it out. It's that conversation that you have with them. Hey, that thing right there, it makes me feel like this. I don't like it when you do this. Either they're going to change. If you see them making the necessary steps to change, you might want to stick with that person a while longer and get them time to prove themselves. If they are not making any steps to change, then you know that they don't give a damn about what you're talking about and you should not waste your time and move on. But instead, we sit and stuff for so long as women, and then we cry. Well, I was this for him, and I did this for him, and I did this for him, and I did this for him. Okay. Okay. Right. How long? How long did you go through that? When was it enough? When did you tell yourself it was enough? When did you get tired? Because people can talk to you all day, but they you cannot go move on it until you're tired. If you're not tired, it ain't nothing that nobody else can say or do about it. Right. We have a, a comment. Can you see it? Yeah. If you're talking about the last one from Michelle B, it says, I'm on my path, I'm on my path of accountability. It's not an easy journey. It's not waking up every day and showing up for yourself is the hardest thing you'll ever do. That's harder than waking up and going to work. Right. You know what you got to do at work. You know what time you got to be there. You know what your job performance is. But waking up for yourself and showing up for yourself is a lot harder because you have to create that path to show up for yourself. You have to envision what that look like showing up for yourself. Right, right. And um, I'm also reading that it says to become more accountable, make sure that you're clear about your roles and responsibilities. Exactly. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. You have to be accountable first. You got to hold yourself accountable. And a lot of people just can't do that because, you know, you know, some people that you want to tell them the truth, but they can't handle the truth. Mm. That's you. With a mm -hmm. You can't handle the truth telling yourself the truth. So a lot of people want to say you crazy. You walk around and talk to yourself. But sometimes I have to tell myself, now, wait a minute now. You're not thinking big enough. I know dog gonna work and just do that. Like my plan, my I have folders and binders to tell me what I need to do every day, even though I do this every day. But some days I get off course with myself and I want to do other stuff and I gotta get back on track and be like, well, where I was, well, let me pick up right here. Let me do this right here. Right. Because your mind gets distracted. Big time. Mm -hmm. Because that means now you no longer procrastinate. Procrastination is our friend. Almost definitely, yes. You know, we I feel as though we, we do better. Procrastination is our friend because for some reason we do better when our back is up against the wall. We come out swinging and we come out victorious. But why in the hell do you got to wait till your back is up against the wall? Why can't you just do little bitty steps every day, show up for yourself every day, take little baby steps so that at the end of that journey, it is completed. It didn't drive you crazy. You didn't lose your damn mind or none of that. You just really went full throttle for yourself instead of, you know, waiting till the last minute. Now you cussing everybody out. I, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. You ain't helping me. There ain't nobody helping me. That's when the hard words come out. Because you waited forever. You knew this stuff was happening. And then you wait till the last minute. You want to uh, don't nobody take care of me. Ain't nobody helping me. No, that's you. So it's that's procrastination. So you saying that's procrastination. Because if you would have took it and care of it ahead of time, you wouldn't be at the point of your breaking point where you just want to just lose your damn mind and just be like, look, and try to... So you think like blaming others, that's part of it too, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the lack of self-accountability because you knew these things, you know, that's just like being accountable, let's say on a different aspect. Women always want to be accountable for shit that they can't be accountable for. What I mean is I want to be accountable for what the hell my man at. I'm going to call him 27 million goddamn times. Where you at? What you doing? When you coming back? No, but you can't even be accountable for cleaning clean up this goddamn house. You can't be accountable for washing the kids, or uh, I mean, washing the clothes or cooking a goddamn meal. But here you is, want to be accountable for my actions. Mm. Wow. If you wasn't procrastinating, you wouldn't have got backed up on what you had to do in the first place. Okay. A lot of our relationship fall because we don't have a life. And we we are expecting that man to be everything to us. All right, ladies. How, how so many ladies in the building? What y'all think about that? Come on now. That's a hot topic. That's a hot saying, what she just said. What you ladies think about that? How do y'all feel about it? Drop some comments. We already have one saying the worst enemy is oneself. Yes, ma'am. I agree with that 100%. We are our worst uh, enemies. Mm -hmm. But like I was saying, you're expecting this man to be everything to you. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, okay, this is about to touch some hearts. And I'm sorry, y'all, but you know, I can't talk in parables. I can't talk around it. I just got to give you what I got. Okay. Baby, keep it 100. That's no. why we call Eminem. Oh, Lord, I said Eminem. That's why we call like talking about it. Keep it 100. No. So, Men never said that they were faithful creatures. Men never told us that. The world told us that we are supposed to have a monogamous relationship, but when you look at nature, what do you see? You see a lion with the lionesses, and some women haven't had a mother, so where do we go as women from there? You find your mentor, baby. You find you somebody. First off, let me applaud you on this because a lot of people not going to say that. And a lot of people didn't have mamas. They had mammas. Them women didn't know what they was doing. And they were steady yelling, oh, I'm doing the best I can. No, you didn't. So all I say is find your mentor. Find somebody that you can sit up on. The fact that you realize that you need a little bit of help and you're not saying, oh, well, I don't need no help. Okay, no woman teach me nothing. You already a step ahead of most. So find you somebody that you can get up under and you can learn from. 
Because a lot of women don't even much know that. They just look at it like, can't no woman tell me what to do. Or they're going to go deflect once again and say, well, where her man at? Why she got so much advice and she ain't got no man? That's why. I have standards. It's certain things that you have to have when you come to the plate to date me. I don't want to have those conversations and crying at night because uh, I ain't got my bill money and you've been laying here giving me a wet ass. No, we're not going to do that. But let me ask this question, uh, Melinda. Why do you feel mm -hmm. like, why do you believe that women don't want to go to other women for mentorship or for help or just to, just to talk to each other? Why do you feel like that? Why is it like that? Or is it like that? I mean... Because women are in competition. Women are in competition. You see a woman that in your mind <coughs> looks better than you, automatically the first thing you're thinking is she thinks she out there. So I, I just, really believe that women are in competition nowadays. Are they not? You got women in competition in your family. I mean, I don't know because I'm not, to be honest. You might not be, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. You got those women in the family that be like, oh, well, you can't come by my house. Why? Because I got a man. And you know what I'm saying? Them kind of women. Those be the main women that be in competition. Them anus that be like, oh, baby, you can't come around here. I got a man. Oh, baby, you know, you know them women. Oh, you right. You know them women. You must because them are the too. same women that as soon as they man is cheating, they want to go talk to the woman instead of the man, the one that made the agreement with you, the one that laid down next to you. Oh, no, you want to run up in a woman's face. It's not her problem. It's not her problem. She didn't lay next to you and told you she was going to be with just you. And when you realize that a man ain't going to be with just you, you'll be all right. Because it was never designed that way. That's the part that's hurting everybody's feelings. And if you look into the world right now, men are being with men. So our slim, we got slim pickers. What you going to do? I can listen to another woman if it's going to elevate my life from a place of struggle to success. Definitely. Thank you. That's but what I'm saying. Like, why, why does it have to be like that? Like, we should all help each other and help each other build and grow as women. So I'm not understanding, like, one person, one woman don't go to want to go to another woman that's that's being successful to teach them or show them the way of how to be successful. I'm not understanding that part because if I have a mentor and somebody trying to teach me the right way on how to build myself up as a woman, I would love to go to. That's why I said my three women that I had in my life is gone. So now I'm just out here on my own. You know what I'm saying? But I've learned from my three women that i have lost you know what i'm saying to right. help other women like come on if i can help you i'm gonna help you so i don't understand now it's competition this is that's bull crap to me i mean i'm sorry i don't feel that <clears throat> i've been trying to get people for uh i've been trying to get a shoulder to cry on for for the mothers out there that has lost kids i've been trying to do that do you know though nobody want to respond to my post like exactly. wow i didn't lost exactly. the son you didn't lost the daughter you didn't lost the son like i've been trying to get that going for years now a shoulder to crown nobody want i'm like wait a minute what is wrong with the women like don't y'all need some, i need it like y'all don't need it the thing with that is is that we are struggling with mental health issues and nobody wants to admit it that's just like saying i'm crazy you're not crazy baby you are overwhelmed you are overworked and you're tired you got yeah. the things mixed up. A lot of us are mentally exhausted. We are fucking depressed and we don't even know how to say that shit. We don't even much know how to communicate that to the people around me. Baby, it's not you. I'm going through an emotional breakdown today. Just give me some time. Back up. Give me 50 feet. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I need a break day. A lot of women, they breaking down. They don't even know how to pick themselves up. Baby, start with just writing it out on a piece of paper. Going by some water. Tearing that paper up. Throwing that shit in the water. Or, you know... You have different methods. Go up in your tub, run you some bath water. Go ahead and imagine that water running off you. Those are your problems, and you let it go down that, that drain. You know what I'm saying? You got to learn how to have more time with yourself. You have to realize what it is that makes you happy. Because I know for myself, my very first apartment, I moved in. I moved in with my kids. For the very first time in my life, my kids no longer live with me. They are all grown and gone, and I'm confused as hell as to what the hell makes me happy. Mm. you have to start all over 
you done lived your whole life with these kids. Now what you do? I have to date myself. Hey, that's a big text right there. To so figure out what the hell I like. What is it that I want? Because now I don't know what I want. Because you've always been there for your kids. That's why. So it was just you and your kids. You, you know what I'm saying? I understand that. But you know what? I have to be honest with myself. I chose not to take accountability because them kids was my stuff and crutch. They was my era. They was my everything. So that was my reason for, no, I ain't got to have a man. I got my kids. My kids was everything. That was my reason for not having friends. That was my reason for not going places. That was my reason for being by my goddamn self, me and my kids. I don't need nobody. So you didn't have friends, Melinda? I had friends. I'm, I'm, I can't say I had friends. I had associates. Man. Associates. <laughs> That's the word we use, associates. <laughs> I had associates. Well, okay. You know what? I'm going to go back there because you said, this is something you said about, and I know you say you didn't want to talk about the mental health thing, but at the same time, you just said that, you know, people be like, oh, you crazy. So yeah. why do they use that word? Why? Who came up with using crazy if a person has a mental health issue? Because they don't understand it. See, you could look at me and you'll think I'm fine. I have days where I stay in my house and I won't even get out of my bed. Thanks. That's depression. But you just feel a healthy person. You yeah. think of all the knowledge in my head, like I ain't been through shit. But if I tell you my story, it'll make you cry. That's me. I don't even know how to talk about things in my life because I never had someone who would listen. Thank God for this platform. I'm bringing my sisters in on the next one. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, please do. Please do. But us, when we in a space of depression, everybody want to look at it as laziness or boredom or something like that. Your mind won't let you rest. You got 101 things going through your mind. You can't sleep. And if you're a spiritual person, then you realize that you're waking up at a certain time of night. You're waking up between the hours of two and four, and you wonder, why the hell am I up? Why am I up? So that's basically your mind trying to, your mind trying to get some rest, but at the same time, that's you getting downloads of where you're supposed to be going next. This is your time to be with you. Your body is saying, Hey, I need some me time. I need you to sit here. I need you to meditate. I need to tell you something. It's something going on. Either it's me, my body, I need to tell you something about your body, or I need to tell you about what we need to be doing tomorrow what we need to be doing next week, what we need to be doing. You know, it's a download, but a lot of us, we miss it and think, oh, well, I just got insomnia. I can't sleep or um, I'm just busy and I, I I just can't get my mind to focus. Learn how to meditate, baby. Go ahead and put them feet in that grass. Get grounded. Well, with me is if I go to bed early, I do wake up at three. That's only because I've dreamed about somebody. So when I do my dreaming, when I dream about somebody, I immediately wake up and I pray about that person that I dreamed about. That's that's how I've been doing for years. You know, it's just and then I know that I'm doing that. So sometimes I don't go to sleep till three. So I ain't got to I ain't got to right. You have to dream about people like, oh, I'd be like, OK, father, I don't know what you're trying to show me or tell me. But yeah, this that's how my mind functions on a spiritual level like that. I dream about people when I wake up at three o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we got to just realize and, you know, a lot of times others can see it. If they have experienced it themselves, they can see it and they try to help others out. Um, but a lot of times a person that's going through it don't see it. You could tell them, but they don't really see it. And you'll try to help them with like going in and doing something like just. Maybe you did their hair or you got them an outfit or um, cleaned up for them or gave them a journal or any of these things to try to help because you see it. And it's like, if they can't see it, you can't help them. That's not saying you're crazy. That's just saying, baby, you're tired. See, we as women, we get it confused. Saying depressed, oh, she crazy, she depressed. No, a depressed woman is a tired woman. It can be everything to that. It can be anxiety. It can be stress. It can be depression. It can be all that that causes a mental problem. Oh, yeah. It can be all that. 
I even seen something that said that people usually start getting mental mental problems at the age of 14. I would say a lot younger than that. You believe a lot younger than that? Yeah. And that's based on the trauma that we're exposed to in our childhood. So do you believe that everybody have a little form of PSTD? Yes. If you black, yeah. It's embedded in you. It's in your blood. It came down from the ancestors. You dealing with it? Mm. Can you be more elaborate on that and what you mean by that? Why you okay, say that? Okay, so... Oh Lord, I'm about to. Oh Lord, I'm about to. Okay, let's go ahead. We're gonna do this. When the slave owners were, when the slave owners were, as they call it, book breaking, they would take the black male, and they would do things to him in front of the female. Facts. And um, that in turn would the man thought to himself basically the woman didn't respect him because you couldn't support or not necessarily support but secure provide security for the family. So going on down the line within the book breaking, they would have they'll just made us together put this nickel with this nickel girl and they didn't care if that was a father and daughter they didn't care so now you didn't inbred us right so that blood is in us today i know every family got a pedophile where you think that came from it's wow. not blood. I'm definitely tired, but I tend to keep keep praying, meditating, and have discipline in my life. You have to. You have to. Yeah, that's a major process. That's a major step in everyone's life. First of all, we need to know the fruits of the spirit. You know what I'm saying? And and the, okay. the, self, the self control is most definitely one of them. And, and I believe all that um, is included when you say you're, you're trying to discipline yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's not self control to me, because <clears throat> that's a hard part of of that's a hard part of anybody's life. Oh yeah, especially when we're dealing with uh, with the world we're dealing with now. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say a lot of us have mental health issues. We really don't know how to talk about it or what to begin. Because nine chances out of ten, every woman that you talk to, I, if you put ten of us in a room. I'm going to say at least eight of us has been sexually assaulted at a young age. Wow. Is that what you believe? Or do you have some some facts on it? Do you think that? Oh, yeah. Feel or... I, I, I haven't. I've been in rooms with women. Right. I guarantee you I could get women on this live and we could have the same cry about the same damn thing. And you know what? And you know what's the crazy part about it is? they don't have nobody to talk to about it or they exactly. don't want to talk to nobody about it because they're embarrassed first of all they're scared first second of all and maybe they just don't trust nobody to keep their situation within with, with, with them themselves you know what i'm saying because you know right. they don't people don't know how to hold water you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. the first time somebody tell you something about a personal issue next thing you know the whole goddamn everybody know about it so yeah. that's a lot of time that's a lot of reasons i believe that women don't talk to other women at, at the same time that also i would say it's because they just don't know they don't what? know that what happened to you as a child first off was not your fault they don't understand that what happened to them is actually the reason why they are having problems in their relationship today. They are triggers. Yeah. I, I'm one that can attest. I really don't like dealing with couch action. Because that's what happened. Wow. I'm sorry to hear that. So when you start to realize that these are in, they're having a problem, 
later on in life. This is just like with, with men, right? So mm -hmm. every man that you sleep with, right, they leave in parts of their DNA in you. So when you get with the next man and you're trying to have a relationship, all them other men's DNA is up against this man's DNA and y'all fighting and you don't even know why y'all fighting because y'all can't get along. It's another man inside you. You got to clear all that up. Like like we spoke on before, different soul ties is running through your body. Yeah. So when you dealing with these mental things and you can't correlate that this is the reason why you have having trouble in your relationships as a woman, you know, you have to really talk to somebody because we all been through it. But if you're going to hold back, then you're going to continue to go through what you go through. I've been a victim of sexual assault as a child, and it's been the hardest thing of my life to talk about because people are not so open to tough conversations. That's true. Yes, yes. And I, the first part of that is that you got to forgive yourself because most of them, they, everyone I've ever met, we always say it's our fault. How's your fault your child? And I'm sorry you had to go through that also. I, I really am. Yes. And like she said, it's not your fault. And that's one thing, like she said, that is the toughest conversation for women to talk about. But I believe that women should be able to talk about it with other women, though. But this like is. I said before, it's hard because of the, the messiness, you know? Women just can't, like, just, we need to have a women's group and just, like, make sure everybody keep it all in the group, you know what I'm saying? And let everybody express their feelings on what they've been through in their life. And maybe that'll help. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that'll help other women to be like, okay, I done got it off my chest. You know what I'm saying? I done cried on somebody's shoulder. Um, yes, I done cried on somebody's shoulder. So, like, I'm ready to rebuild because that, that's going to take rebuilding. That's not an easy step for women. You have to rebuild, but you got to let it out first. And like Melinda said, you have to be able to forgive yourself mm -hmm. in order to move on. And sometimes forgiving yourself meaning talk to other people. And you have to find out what your triggers are. Because a lot of times we think <coughs> that we're, this is who we are. That's not who you are. You were somebody totally different before they happened to you. Mm. So when it you find out your, what your triggers are, then you will be able to say, oh, okay, I'm triggered. Let me, let me take a step back. Let me breathe a little bit because it wasn't his fault. Mm -hmm. You know, that might have been something that was lingering on. Let me let me sit in this for a minute. A lot of times we don't want to, somebody say something, right? And immediately we want to just pop out. We ain't even thinking about it. We just gun ho. Just hold on a second. Let's sit in that thing. Let's replay it in our head for a minute and see if that's really what the issue is or is it an underlying issue that we really need to talk about. Mm. Because sometimes it's not even that person. It's, it's what they said or how they said it that reminded us of when somebody else didn't see it. So now we got to add it to it. It's them triggers. When you figure out what your triggers are, then you could be a better person. But in order to heal, you can't heal in the same place where you was hurt. Well, let me ask you this, Melinda. How did you heal yourself? What, what was the steps that you took to kind of get yourself build, rebuild back up? The first thing I had to do was be accountable. I had to be accountable enough to say that I was not perfect. I did the best that I could as a mother. I did the best that I could as a daughter. I did the best that I could as a sister. I did the best that I could as a cousin. And that was it. Every time I walk out my door, I make sure that when I speak to someone, I give them all of me. So that I don't have anything to be worried about. I could have said this or I could have done this. No, I'm going to give you what you need to know. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hold it back. If it's education, if it's knowledge, if it's love, if it's a hug, if that's what you need at the moment, I'm going to give you that. Because nobody was there to give me that. So secondly, I know that I had to dig in deep with myself and I had to ask myself the whole questions. What is it that helped you triggered? What is it that is that you don't like about yourself? What is, what is it that make you insecure? What is it that you need in order to make you happy? What is it that you need to hear? What is the apology that you need to hear from somebody that you have not received that can allow you the time and the effort to move on? 
because a lot of time it's an apology that we did not get that has us stagnant. You're not going to get it. And even if you do get it, it's not going to come out the way that you want to hear it. So therefore, write you the apology that you can hear, that you can understand, that you can move on and heal from. The apology that you deserve to hear. Write that out for yourself. Because it don't matter if they come back and apologize, it's still not good enough. Wait, 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 wait. What you mean it's still not good enough? Because they ain't going to say it the way you want them to say it. They're not going to say everything that you need to hear in order to heal. And half of the time, if they do apologize, they don't even know what they're apologizing for, so they're bound to repeat it. Ah, okay. Okay. So apologize to yourself and let it go. So the first step, the first step of it all is to do what? Apologize to yourself. Exactly. And the second thing is what? Accountability? No, accountability is first. Second is apologizing to yourself. Taking responsibility for your own actions and then apologizing for your actions that you did. Yeah, because you said did not do. too long. Yeah. Whether you did it or didn't, you probably sat in some shit too long that you weren't supposed to sit in. Sat in a relationship too long that hardened you and made you a man. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, you sat in some shit too long. You need to forgive yourself for that. You didn't know no better. You thought that was love. And that's the sad part. A lot of times we really think that's love when that's not love. Love is not supposed to hurt. Love is supposed to be a beautiful dance between a woman and a man being submissive to each other. Not just one person being submissive, but being submissive to each other. You Come on now, big other. facts. You, you, you are supposed to want to do for the other person. Right. A lot if of it's in your heart that. to do, because sometimes these people, don't, don't nobody have it in their heart to do it nowadays. We don't really like each other for real. <laughs> that part. We don't like each other for real. We only doing it for, for, for play play to say I got a man. Right. We only doing it because we want him to do something back. Give us something back. Wow. So we ain't doing it for real. We looking for something. So how do y'all feel? We got two people that watch this watching right now. I think our other two kind of logged out, but I hope they come back in. But my our two people that's watching, how do y'all feel about that? What she said, Melinda is saying right now. Drop a comment. Don't be scared. Y'all come on in. We want to hear. Y'all opinions matter. I mean, hey, y'all pump up our conversations with y'all opinions. So let's go. Drop y'all comments in. Yeah, Miss Tiff been quiet tonight. Normally she has some questions. I don't even know if she's still watching. It's two people, but I don't know who the two people is. Neither do I. But I know uh Miss, what is that, Michelle? Yeah. Miss Michelle B, I we appreciate your comments, girl. Your opinion really matters. And um, how are you rebuild? Are you still on? How are you rebuilding? What did you do to? Uh, well, you did already say you meditate, pray, and um, you did make a comment saying how you was doing it already and disciplining yourself. So I think that's an awesome thing. And don't stop doing that. I don't care what the obstacle may be, what comes your way. Um, you keep doing what you do to help yourself grow and help yourself forgive. You know, it's a big part of, of everything that you guys have, are dealing with or all women have dealt with. Like Melinda said, mm -hmm. you know, what, 80 for what? 80% out of the women you said? 70 to 80% out of the women? Yeah. Have dealt with issues like that? Yeah. I mean, and let's just be honest. Mental health don't start off the way you think it sort off because when you have been a victim of sexual assault, the first thing that you start to do is you have insecurities. Mm. Come on now, talk about it. You have insecurities about your body. You have insecurities of how people look at you. You have insecurities because no one was there to protect you. So now you feel vulnerable. And you lash out at people because you feel vulnerable. Come on. So once we're able to talk about it, now that shame that you're feeling, those insecurities that you're feeling, they're no longer there. Now you can start loving the person that's in front of you. You can't love what's in front of you because you haven't let go of what, of what happened to you. Ah, in your past. Exactly. Mm. 
And that's the major part. Yeah, a lot of women are out here getting these BBLs and tummy tucks, and it's all because they don't love themselves. They stopped loving the person that was in the mirror because they just felt like, well, that's all men want, so let me make my body look like what they want because that's, that's the only thing, you know, they're going to take advantage of it anyway. You think that's, excuse me, y'all, you think that's how women feeling? Insecurity? Oh, yeah. It's more insecure people than you know. I believe that. I believe that 100%, but I also believe that it's a lot of, it's a lot of what they see. Like, because it's being shown like constantly of, you know, big booty women and it's BB dog. This is all over the damn internet. So I believe it's a, like you say, insecure. This is a woman be like, oh, look at her stomach. She ain't got no stomach, but she got a big old butt. And they'll be like, oh, well, wait a minute. I got this big belly, my food for show. And look, but you know what? Not really. Big girls is coming back. <laughs> I ain't talking about the ones with the BBWs. All I'm saying is, is that when you have a man that lay next to you every day, right? And he don't tell you you're beautiful, but you lay in there in your natural state because that's what they normally tell you. Baby, I like you without the lashes. I like you without the makeup. I like you without the wig. Okay. So now I'm laying here in my natural state. Now I'll never see you say you're beautiful or nothing else. But let me go on your motherfucking Facebook. Now you didn't like this to help a picture. She half dressed. She ain't got no stomach. She ain't got no cellulite. She ain't got no natural hair. She got on lashes. You know what I'm saying? And now that's making me feel insecure because the woman that you're liking and hearting pictures on looks nothing like me. Looks so that will make... So you believe that what that's what makes the women go out there and do those things? Exactly, because I'm trying to look like the girls on the pictures that you put all these hearts under. She getting all your attention. I might be here cooking and cleaning for you, but you're not paying me no attention. So I gotta go look like her. Wow, never thought about it like that, y'all. Maybe that is the problem. Well, hell, I got on my lashes tonight, and that was just tonight, though. <laughs> But that don't mean I'm trying to look like nobody else because mama fee is mama fee. And anybody that know me, know me. And look, I ain't even got my nails done. I'm not into all that. Like, okay, I might one day and I might not. No. So, yeah, I agree with you saying. Be you. Be yourself. Stop trying to be like what you see, Hollywood. Don't we be Hollywood. Have be the superficial you. side of ourselves to try and cope with the trauma on the inside. Exactly. Oh, that's good, Michelle. B. Exactly. You you dress up the outside to try to make the inside feel good, but then you land next to this man that's telling you, "I like you better when you're natural." But you can't get this mother lover to tell you you're beautiful on any given goddamn Sunday, and you start to wonder, "Am I beautiful?" But when you go to the store, you got everybody heckling. Hey, say say say, little mama, say little mama. Now you wonder what's wrong with me? Why why he don't think I'm beautiful? But he chose me. I'm laying next to him. But he liking all these other girls' pictures that look nothing like me. Okay, well, they, they'll grow the insecurity within yourself because once again, society play on me. But in the back of our heads, we gotta think about it. Maybe the problem is not us. It might not be us. It's not us. If you if he not giving you that love, but he will bring the insecurities to you. I understand what you're saying. But at the same time, we have to be strong enough in our minds to be like, well, wait a minute. Maybe you the problem and not me. But how many of them don't know that? How many women don't know that? They sit in it. Like I said, they sit in that shit too long and they come out stinking. They sit in it. They Fact. think, well, if I just change this about myself, he'll love me more. Or if I just do this, then he'll love me more. If I do more for him, he'll love me more. It's not going to change. They'll sit in a whole relationship for 10, 12 years before a man married them. They just shelled out all these kids before the man married them. And then you mean to tell me you didn't see them red flags before? Statistics will tell you a man is going to marry you in the first six months to a year if you the one. He know off the bat. I don't know about that one right there. <laughs> Feet to the top of his damn head, and that might have to take some years. I'm sorry. 
why would I do that? And that to me, that's one of the reasons why they have so much divorce because everybody's so quick to try to marry somebody from six to eight months to a year. Dog, no, I don't know that nigga. I, 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 excuse my language. I don't know that person with, with six months to a year. It takes years for you to know somebody. And then after those years, you still got to learn, relearn that person. Because you don't know a person even after day. years. And I'm, I'm going to be honest enough to tell you, my longest relationships have dealt with people I might have met on this day. And we talk literally every damn day. And I give you about a month in. Now we didn't say, you know what? I really like you. I, I just can't be away from you or whatever the case may be. We didn't been through that, right? That's what I was telling you. Whereas this same guy would not commit to the next girl. She didn't been doing the same things I've been doing. But he said he's telling her now, nah, baby, I just want to be friends with benefits. We could be fucking the same nigga, but we ain't fucking the same nigga. Oh. Nah. See, nah. The things that, the things that he going to do for me, he not going to do for you. Right. I bring something different to the table. So if you never required and you sat in that thing for 10 years and then he meet me in six months, he ready to wipe me up, you're going to be mad. I brought more to the table. I require more of him. Okay. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. A woman that challenges a man on certain levels, those are the ones that they keep. Mm, that's deep. What y'all think about that? Ladies, what y'all think about that? That's deep. Okay, but at the same time, here's I always do devil's advocate. <laughs> but at the same time, if if a if a female been with a man that long for 10 years, she pretty much basically molded him to be what for like she pretty much molded him to be for the next woman, basically. And that's exactly what happens. Anytime you with a man for too damn long, you are simply molding him to be with the next woman. He's going to pick up on everything that she did that you didn't do. And the thing is this, us as women, we get so caught up that sometimes we still forget to speak life into that man. So let you be down talking him, disrespecting him, and another woman come and she speak life into him, you just lost her. Well, you know what? I get what you're saying, but at the same time, I say if 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 I if you lose them, you never had them in the first place. Exactly. But if if it was a fifth, we'll all be drunk. That's true. Hell, I'm let me shut up. <laughs> you talking already halfway there. Shit. Girl, look, but I'm just saying no, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that feel like that. Like, come on, if you if he was, if it was that easy, then it wasn't. It wasn't meant to be in the first place. But damn, you wasted ten years of my life. You should have just told and me. And they will. Up. And they will. You something to do? If you let me sit there and play in your face for ten years, I ain't gotta marry you. I ain't gotta put you in the house. I ain't gotta buy you no car. I ain't gotta do none of this. I can go sleep and fucking suck on Sally Sue and somebody down the street, and you still take me back. That's exactly what the fuck I'm doing. I'm going to waste your motherfucking time until I get to where I need to be in life. And then I find somebody that's worthy of me and I'm going to move the fuck out. But what I'm saying is who want to wait that long for a man to grow? Because to me, that sounds like growth. That sounds like men. But first of all, we already know it. we already know that women kind of grow faster than men mentally. You be um, I mean, the women sit in it. Huh? Say it again. You'll be surprised how many women sit in it. They'll sit there and have babies for the nickel. Wait for it to come into fruition, then he marry you. Why the hell he ain't marry you when you first had the child? You had to give him all them babies, wait all this time. Now he ready to marry you. Why? Because they not ready yet. As the men are not ready yet. Yeah, they wanna they wanna something. treat you. They wanna treat you if like you look wife. at it biblically. The Bible says that when you lay with a woman, you're supposed to marry her. Ain't no such thing as I'm not ready. The world told us all of a sudden we're not ready. They gave the man a scapegoat to not be ready. You're supposed to be ready the moment that your penis gets to that fucking vagina. I'm tired of hearing it. We don't have standards. We don't make them want nothing. We don't make them, we don't we don't require them to do anything. So they're not. 
they're not. Okay, so do you think that's why the divorce? Why do you do you feel like the divorce rate is high? The divorce rate is high because women won't shut the fuck up, and men won't be honest about what the hell they need in life. And even if they is honest about what the hell they need in life, women ain't women. They're gonna have a problem with that shit. Let a man come home and tell you, baby, I love you, I'll marry you, but I'm gonna need another bitch on the side. Are you okay with that? Okay, but at the same time, would you rather him do all that and then cheat and then you find out and get heartbroken? So which one would be right? He, I For mean, me, I'm, I'm a different breed, baby. For me, it's a requirement that you have another. Because, see, on days, I might not want to get none, baby. Somebody else going to need to fill in for me and take care of that motherfucking business for me. I'm going to need you to have more than one. I'm, I'm tired. I can't do it. I cannot be your everything. See, that's the problem with us. We want to be a man everything. We ain't even, we don't even know this man, right? We haven't asked nobody what it take for, to be this man's girlfriend or his everything. Now we done jumped into it. We want him to be monogamous and don't be with us. Now we, we ain't getting him no booty because we tired. We ain't cooking for him. We ain't cleaning for him. But not knowing that the only reason why we love Ray Ray uh, Pookie in the first goddamn place is because he had about five or six bitches over there helping us along with our damn job and we thought we was the best. It was other bitches on the team helping us out. We didn't know that. We just wanted to holler about. We want to be everything. Now you got the job settling. You tired, ain't you? You tired. You got a sub dick on Monday. You got a swing from a chandelier on Wednesday. Come on now. You gonna be a damn circus rat trying to take care of one damn man by your damn self. Michelle say, "Wow, we settle for what we think we worth. Evaluate your worth, yes, ma'am." Exactly. Yes, ma'am. I agree with that 100%. And I think a lot of us, a lot of women don't know their worth. But why is it that they we don't know our worth as women? Because we haven't encountered it. See, what I've realized is that women don't really know that when you're feminine, you get way more shit. A lot of people that come in contact with me, they watch me from a distance and they be like, well, why you act the way you act? First off, I tell y'all last week, I don't like to do nothing for myself. When I get around a man, I am fucking helpless. Help me. I can't open my own bottle. I can't light my own cigarette. I can't open the door. I need help with everything. I'm going to talk real low so you come on over here and get my scent all in your nostrils. Boo. I need, yeah, I'm very sensual. I'm very soft. I need you to understand it. Treat me like I am fragile. A man wants to be needed. If he see a feminine woman around, he going to want to automatically do for her. Right. A woman is loud and boisterous and yah, yah, yah. Don't nobody want to do nothing for you. Don't nobody want to help you. Wow. That makes sense. So, I mean, Keep talking. At the end of the day, women, we need to shut up. That's number one. When we learn how to close our goddamn mouth, we'll be all right. We ain't got to have the last damn word. Sometimes they just want to hear their self talk. We we always got the last word in the end. You just got to be able to know how to move that 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 mountain with your power, your power of your femininity. Sending that 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 nice little soft spot. And yeah, he might have made you upset, but baby, I'm gonna be real sweet to you. I'm make you feel confused. Oh, I'm sorry, is something wrong? Why are you talking to me in that tone? Why are you talking to me like that? Well, I tell you what, Melinda, you a hell of a woman for saying all that because nowadays and, and any other days, women not doing that. I mean, let's be in reality. Like I always try to say, like we in reality. Like how many women you know doing that? Not many. Because now, many. I mean, it's like women have a voice now. And if they don't have a voice, they're going to make their voice loud enough where people can, where they think where people can hear them. Right? And that's the wrong way to be. If they ain't hear you the first time, shut up. Mm -hmm. 
she said uh melissa b said something we are very fragile as women and i love a man who can handle that part of me with care and not taking advantage yes that's true we as women are very fragile and we do need to be handled with care but a lot of men are emotional um unintelligent they lack emotional intelligence they do not know how to deal with us because we are emotional beings and when i tell a woman that i want my man to have another woman they looked at me like why the fuck would you want to share the woman is not in place for him she's in place for me no i'm not gay but because he is lacking emotional intelligence i'm gonna always have a friend right there with me because i can talk to her about the things that you know what i'm saying that i'm going through as a woman that he cannot fathom or know what to tell me he can't cry with me. He looking at me like, God damn, you cried yesterday. Why the hell you crying today? Not her. She gonna get right there with me and cry snot over tears. So what you saying is you would be, you would be, you would take that into consideration. Yeah. But why? Because to take a village, a man is only here to procreate. Okay. At the end of the day, they hit appropriate and to provide security. We we coming up on the wall, man. I won't be by my damn self. Right. I was told this is gonna be seven women to one man. Look at what we're going through. Half our men are laying with men. So you find a good man and he could take care of more than one household. You mean to tell me you wouldn't settle? You wouldn't help that man build his goddamn empire? So you can have something. Versus just being by yourself, keep fucking with these low lives that ain't gonna help you build. And then when the war come, you hungry and they gonna pull your ass up out your house by your bootstraps. No. So once, so so you saying give the man what he want? In I'd order to, give it, I'd rather give it to you willingly than for you to sneak around and do it, and now you gave me something. Right. I'd rather give it to you willingly than you sleeping around and you gave this bitch all our money. Now we can't pay our rent. And hey, Melissa, we say because house. men just can't have one woman. This is our reality now. Yeah. And you're going to always have a side bitch that don't mind coming in. So why not invite that hoe in there? Now you into the pack, bitch. You can't go nowhere. So you into the polygamy relationships? In a minute, everybody gonna be. They just don't know it yet. Mm. They just don't know it yet. I see a lot of that going on, like nowadays. Like, why not just be open and free about it, right? Because it's actually it's a beautiful thing when you find two, when you find people on the same board. Um basically you can build things you can have businesses one person at home doing the cooking and cleaning the homeschool the kids whatever the other person is helping in the business life the man is outside working you have more income you can have more things versus you know, sneaking off with her giving her a little change and you having a little change now y'all both barely making it y'all living for paycheck to paycheck bring them paychecks together mm. Wow, that's a good way of looking at it. Because I am seeing a lot of it happening now. I am. Yeah. Hmm. The men are going to always sleep around. It don't matter. They can get caught and still going to sleep around. So you don't think there's no good men out there? There are. Not doing that? Just because a man sleep with more than one woman does not make him a bad man. It's in his DNA. It's in his in his soul. It's embedded in him. The world that we live in told him he had to be monogamous. The Bible didn't told you a man ain't even monogamous. Look at all the wives they had. Facts. That's why our men are having a hard time. The world didn't told him now you can only have one woman. That was never the setup. That was never the setup. They are going crazy. They like what the hell? I got to deal with one, and when she on her period, I can't get no more right hell even when she ain't on up here i can't get no more we ain't getting along i need to have another hole i can go crawl up in 
simple. But a lot of people don't want to look at it that way. That's they true. They want to have that man for themselves. And in having your man for yourself, not chance out of 10, that nigga done cheated on Wow. And you might not wow. be coming, but he damn showed and stepped out. He didn't taste him something else. Okay, so what are we supposed to do as women? Get the hell out the way. What you mean? This ain't about you. Wait, what you mean it's not about us as women? It's not necessarily about you in the meaning of what he needs to do to be happy to fulfill and give us what we need. A man can only do so much, right? If he's not happy and he's steady trying to make you happy, eventually that's where the divorce come in at. But if it was somebody else in that back corner to help lighten that blow, he's a lot happier. He can love on you better and take care of you better. You see what I'm saying? Right. I understand what you're saying. But a lot of women don't look at it like that. They just still, I, I can't share my man. I got to have him to myself. All right. Well, then you still going to be crying when he stopped giving you that emotional support because you want somebody to be in the house cooking and cleaning with you. You want them to help with the laundry. No. What you want is for him to either make enough money so you can buy you, uh, pay for a goddamn uh, maid or somebody else to alleviate some of that. But what you, what you expecting him to do? That's taking time away from him as a man. And now he looking at you like, well, what I got you here for? I can pay somebody to do this. Okay, that's Marie. Melissa be coming. She said, I would rather be enlightened than deceive and cause the, my pain in my life. Reality over fantasy. Okay, but you guys. Now, Melissa, uh, Melinda, you are, you said that this is how we was taught, right? The world taught us that we should be in a monogamous relationship, right? Yeah. This is how we was taught. Really? If that was the case, then granddaddy wouldn't have had that family down the street. <laughs> I'm just saying. we Men have never been monogamous. Even when they was bringing home to check the granny, he still had a goddamn family down the street. And he was taking care of them too. Not all of them, Melinda. We're we, we not going to stereotype uh, all of them, okay? Not all of them. I'm just saying. <laughs> We're not going to do that because that's not true for everybody. Not all the grandpas did that, okay? Let's them grandpas brought that goddamn check home to Granny because they knew what kind of bitch she was. They knew that if we give her the check, I can go out here and have all the pussy I want or whatever. As long as I take care of home, happy life, happy wife, she ain't worried. But, wow. but grandpa was out there on the street, you hear me? He was hitting them holes. Not all grandpas. I'm gonna say that again. We're not we not uh we're not stereotyping all the grandpas. Not all of them was out yeah. here. She feel like that, y'all, but I don't. Not all of them. I, I don't believe all of them was out there like that. Now, they might have had a hand few or a two hand few, but I don't believe it was all of them. So, Grandpa said, <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I don't What'd you say? So, what you're saying is the granddaddies didn't have all them kids, that he wasn't no Rolling Stone here, no, I have no out of it like he. No, not all of them. Not all, I understand what you're saying. Don't get me wrong. I'm not disagreeing with you because, yes, probably a lot of them probably was, but not all of them. So we're not going to say granddads. No, we're going to some. Let's put the word some in there. Some granddads had other families. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just like some of them daddies had other families too? Yeah, some. Mm -hmm. Not all majority let's say that okay well that's vice versa now we saw so majority about had extra families what did that tell you that they did not necessarily believe in being monogamous either but because the world told them to be monogamous they had to get that woman that check and they're gonna go on down the street with susan may and give her that broad girl come on melissa b i haven't found one faithful man yet that is for one woman, where they at? 
Okay, okay. Let's vice versa this. We just speaking on how the man did, what the man had done. What about us women? We the reason why he need another hole to climb in. What about us women? We not out there just being all these goody two choose faithful women either. So exactly. let's talk about that. What is the reason why we not out why we out there doing what we do? Why we just blaming it on the men? Like, no, the men has a full responsibility, accountability, and also the women. So why do you think it's like that with the women? Why it goes women right back to what I said in the beginning of this damn thing. We got to be accountable for our actions. The reason why our men are out there, because the Bible says that a man would rather be on the rooftop of a goddamn house than to be in a house with a woman's going. We are just that goddamn bad that the Bible said that the man would rather be on top of the house than be in the house with us. Close your mouth. Wow. That's the reason why he going outside the household. Close your mouth. So no, that's the reason why the women going outside the household. That's the reason why the men going outside the household. No, no, no. See, that's why I said let's do vice versa. Exactly. We, and that's the reason why they doing it because we don't close our mouth. You sit and asking me what are the women doing? The women got their mouth open. We causing this. Take accountability. Learn your place. Know how to be submissive. Get your ass up and work. Do something in the household. Don't have this man come home no dirty motherfucking house. Okay. No food cook, but you want him to pay all the bills. Come on now, but you running your damn mouth. Shut up. Okay, but you still on. Um, you not vice versa. And you still taking it back to the situation that you talking about about the men and helping the men and letting the men grow and do 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 do. I hear that. Woo woo. I'm talking about why is the women stepping out? Because we are not taking accountability in the first place. We are causing chaos when we lay our head. And then whenever we, we don't like it, now we want to run out the house and think we could find something better. It wasn't always chaos. So, so, so you saying that the, the men is not, wait, you saying the men, men is taking their responsibilities like a man? And the women just causing chaos and no, give me an understanding of what you're saying. Give the audience an understanding of what you're saying. Because okay, what I'm, I'm asking, saying is I'm asking when the women step out and the men is doing everything that they supposed to do in the household. I'm right, I'm I'm playing devil's advocate, y'all. I'm saying, okay, we blame everything on the women. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Well, what about when the men step out? I mean the women step out. And they do what they do, and the men in the household taking care of everything. Or you know, come on, give me some something on that. When a woman steps out, for one, she already <laughs> she's stepping out because she didn't. For one, she ain't had no boundaries about herself. She dated below her her character, so therefore she's doing this. He not listening. So now she gonna go try to find her somebody better. When if you actually paid attention in the beginning to them red flags, you wouldn't be sitting this, and he would need to go find somebody else, and neither would you. Okay, but if a woman is talking to her man, why wouldn't he listen? You knew what that man was when you got with him. Now you want to change. Now you're so mad that you got to go step out of the relationship. But it can be more than just that. It can be more than just that, Melinda. It don't have to just be like, yeah, I knew he was like this. And you know what I'm saying? And he ain't changing. Okay, a man going to change on his own. Okay, you can't force a man to change. He's going to change when he get ready to change. If it's in his spirit to do it, he's going to change then. So, but what I'm saying is like, Women, but some men are good men, literally. They are, but they don't discount them from, you know, they, they just because they are good men don't mean they got to be faithful. You got some good men out there, but they are not faithful. Melinda, that is not true. Okay, I'm a single woman. You've been married for all your damn life, right? They have some men that so probably just like that. Is that. The best men that has ever entered my life were married. They took care of me in the manner that I deserve to be treated and taken care of 
simply because I supplied something for them that they didn't have in their marriage. I supplied that ear to listen to them. I talked and spoke life over them. I listened to their ideas about where they're headed in life. Sometimes females can't, when you're in a relationship, you don't want to have to talk. You don't want to have to talk with your man. He probably been telling you the same thing for three years, but you don't believe him. You stop believing in him after the first year. Nigga, that shit didn't happen, so I don't want to hear no more. Mm. Maybe because the man wasn't showing it. How about that? Again, again, it goes back to dating on your level. You expected somebody to change when they showed you where they were in the beginning. And then whenever it's time to say, well, he cheated on me. Whose fault is that? But everybody changes. Everybody changes, though. It's growth. There's different. Exactly. We have different, we have different time frames in our lives. Every We all, as humans, have different time frames in our lives. You know what I'm saying? We be one way when we was a kid. We be one way when we was a, we goddamn teenagers. We be one way when we become adults. And even when we in adults, we still go through a change. So everybody goes through different stages and changes in their lives. Yes, this is true. We all do this, right? Mm -hmm. We grow. That's the whole thing. It's about growing. And it's not growing physically. I'm talking about we grow mentally. Our exactly. mind frames But the thing grow. is, is this. Are you checking back in with your, with your mate? See, the goals and aspirations y'all had going into this thing, where y'all was headed, somebody then changed something down the line. Are y'all having those frequent conversations to re-go over what y'all initially began to go down the road and path to discover? Now, later on down the line, you, you might discover, okay, well, I really didn't want to start this business with you. I thought it was going to be easier, but now we're here. Now I'm not happy. Things change, people change, situations change. If you're not having a constant com com conversation about where you are in at in life, where you're headed in life, then you're going to be bound to drift apart. Within that drifting apart, now those conversations are no longer happening, and he's going to the side piece because she's going to listen. So that goes back to being, that goes back to communication. Communication is a top key, ladies. Communication. And it's not over-talking. It's not talking too much. It's communicating. Communicating. Because we grow faster than men. I'm going to keep saying that. Like, hello? We do. Point blank, right. period. And if anybody don't believe that, they need to go back and take the history. Like, come on. Um, We grow faster than men. Okay? Yeah. But like Melinda said, that don't mean you have to sit there for a whole 20 years. You know what I'm saying? We get that part. But it has to become a time where you be like, okay, I didn't grew. I'm going to go talk to this person, my significant other, and we're going to see if we can come together in agreement and where we both can change for the better. If not, it would be a side piece. Yeah. You got to read. But you gotta who read that, that conversation? But here we go again. Who fault is that? Because one has grew faster than the other. All the person you can place the blame on is yourself. Somebody has to be accountable in that thing. Somebody has to be accountable in that thing. So why we don't blame the man? Why the man can't be accountable? Why we always got to be accountable? Why do we always, why do we, like, I'm just asking, like, ladies, come on, man, like, y'all don't feel like that, like, why she said we need to be accountable, why, they can't be accountable, too, they have responsibilities also, so why is it that we always got to be accountable, because if you, we, if you just be realistic about it, a lot, shit, a lot of this shit wouldn't even be taking place if we close our legs, say it again, a lot of stuff wouldn't take place if we just close our legs. Now, how many women doing that nowadays? Because let me take something. They be willing to do more for you. Do more of what you're asking them to. If there was less options. 
but because it's so easy for them to fall into something. What am work for you for? I'm gonna find something else tomorrow. Y'all, let me let me just put it out there, babies. Um, I do understand what she said. I'm not disagreeing with what she said. I'm just playing devil's advocate. <laughs> I'm looking at both sides of the story, you guys. You know, that's all I'm doing. So please don't be like, oh, Lord, she... No, I'm not that. I'm I'm understanding what she's saying 100%. And I hope you guys are understanding what she's saying, women, because sometimes we don't want to hear from another woman telling us what to do, like she said. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm listening, and I, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Like, we have to be on both sides. We can't just make it a one-sided thing because... Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I mean? Like you we can't just make it a one sided thing because it's both, it's two in a situation, it's two in a relationship. So exactly. both have to, have to play their parts. Exactly. And like I say, I'm not saying that women are always having to take the responsibility of everything, but you do have to be responsible for the men that you choose because the one thing that's a, an equation that is uh repetitive is you. If you still having the same problems with these men, it's because you're not requiring. You're not, you don't have any boundaries about yourself. You have to have a boundary. You know? Because if you don't and they do this thing and then you don't say nothing about it, how they gonna know that they hurt you? If you don't speak up. How they gonna change if you don't tell them? But at the same time, like we said on the other show. Uh, what we did Thursday night, it's okay to tell them, you guys, but you have to tell them in a calm voice. Yeah. She said this. Melinda said this. It's a, it's your tone, how mm -hmm. you come to them, how you talk to them. So that's very important also when we say, when we're talking about this situation. All of that is important. And sometimes yeah, it might be a little hard. Softly. And sometimes it might be a little hard for us. Because, you know, yeah. sometimes we don't have that self-control. And that goes back to what Miss Melissa B was saying. It's most definitely discipline is a self-control thing. And sometimes we don't have that self-control. Sometimes we lose the control. Yeah. You know, and we just go crazy, you know. And we just have to learn how to discipline ourselves, like Miss Melissa B said. And once we find that discipline we can find that inner peace on how to communicate with our significant other. But how are you going to communicate with your significant other when you don't even have peace in yourself? Mm. It goes back to Come on now. that trauma because, again, you don't see the problems that you are bringing from your childhood traumas into the relationships that you have now that is causing them to not work. Mm -hmm. that's causing you to come off so masculine so how do we so my question again i'm asking you to skip so how do we go about changing that within ourselves you gotta start with yourself you gotta start with yourself you have to start dating yourself and finding stuff for you to do you have to have a life for yourself outside of that man because when you don't have a, a life outside of that man, you're going to you're bound to kill the relationship. He cannot be your everything. You cannot be his everything. Y'all got to have a life outside of that relationship. You have to have other people that you're talking to. You have to have other people that is someone into you. You have to have a network, a village of people. But you know we don't have villages no more. Girl, you please gotta work on it. Where them villages at? You gotta work on it. Everybody's for themselves now. It's no more villages. It's about me, myself, and I. It's period. You know what I'm saying? I refuse to speak that into existence for the simple fact that I know that my tribe is out there. All I can do is just constantly ask for it. I'ma ask for it every day. Lord, please just surround me with love. Surround me with others that are like-minded like me, that want to be like me or, or teach me to be better than what I am. But bring me people around me that have a mind 
to think for themselves and want to better themselves. They want to grasp that knowledge. And as I can tell you, the good Lord has been blessing me every day with people that are on the same pathway with me or trying to learn some of the things that I talk about. So I am getting that tribe. I refuse to believe that that tribe is not coming. I want to have a damn book club. And when I first got here, I asked everybody to have a book club with me. They're looking at me like, what? A book club? Girl, look, if you don't if you don't read, goddamn, download the audio book. Listen to that motherfucker. But it ain't no reason why you should not be getting knowledge every day. You walk around with a computer in your hand. It's time out for being dumb. It's time out for ask, have, not having your, your questions asked. You can ask Google anything. Facts. It's time out for that. It's time to grow. And it goes back to we don't want to take accountability. We want to steady say it's all the man, it's all the man, all the man. But I'm going to tell you this. When I was this woman that had the loud mouth and I wanted to shake my ass and I wanted to do all this, the man that I would get was not the caliber of man that I deserve. But when I started progressing in my feminine energy, when I started to love myself, when I started to be quiet, be humble, ask for what I want, tell people what's bothering me, everybody wants to just give to me, give to me, give to me. I'll be like, I'll run out of my money, and I'll be sitting here like, man, I ain't got nothing. Next thing you know, my cash out get the ticket. People want to give to you because you're so soft, you're so sweet, you're so elegant. You give it to other people. It makes other people want to give to you, and you want to, why she always getting stuff? Why she always... Because the universe is, in, is working in her favor. Come on now. It's working in her face. And, and you can feel it in your energy, your peace, your energy, your love. All that is can be seen. It can be seen. So, yes, people gonna want to say, hey, she's a sweetheart or she's a giving person. She loves, she loves on everybody. She so how do you stop people from taking advantage of all of that? Boundaries. You got Look, I know it's hard, and we we wanna we wanna be everybody friend, but baby, you gotta put them boundaries up. Cause at the end of the day, you gotta cut a motherfucker off. When they start not treating you the way that you deserve to be treated, you got to walk away. You cannot let nobody see that you pressed about losing them, because they gonna dog your ass out. If they know that your biggest fear is to lose them. Baby, they gonna drag, drag your ass right through that damn mud. You cannot be afraid to lose somebody. Baby, you did that thing that I told you not to do. I told you it hurt me and you didn't fix it. I'm gonna have to go ahead and walk away. Cause see, I need to be right with me. This ain't got nothing to do with you. I asked you to fix it. I understand you don't know how to fix it. You can't fix it. You won't fix it. Whatever your issue is. But I know I won't be there anymore to receive what you're dishing out. Well, a key word to me right here, what you just said is fear, afraid, fear. Yeah. That's what that is to me. When you said you are afraid to lose me, I don't think, I think fear and afraid, I mean, come on. Think about it. Okay. We all hate a liar, right? My thing is this, we grown. You lied when you was a kid because somebody could do something to you if you lie, right? So now you're grown. The only reason why another grown person needs to lie to me is if they're in fear of losing me. I'm going to say that again. They're in fear of losing me or they're afraid of me. Which one is it? It should be neither. It should be neither. No, because fear should be nowhere near your heart. I'm not scared of you, and I'm not scared to lose you. I will not lie to you. I will tell you the truth, whether it hurts your feelings or not. You can't handle the truth. Now, let me stop. Is it all right? You can't handle the truth. Like, the truth is so real. When a person lies to you, either they are afraid of losing you or they are afraid of you. Which one is it? But that's the only reason to lie. And I'm not afraid to lose nobody enough to lie to you. I'm going to tell you to your face what it is. If you choose to walk away, I respect that. You couldn't handle what I was dishing out. That's fine. Your loss is another person's game. But I'm not afraid to walk away from it. 
I hear that a lot. I didn't heard that a lot. Like, like, oh, I think everybody's starting to feel like that. Like, your loss is somebody else's gain. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. So wow. It still go back to us being accountable. If I don't let you treat me like shit, I won't feel like shit. If I say no, that stops it all. But we want to say that we have a man. So we're going to deal with it. We try to deal with it behind closed doors until it's too much. Now it's spilling all over. And everybody see it. So we got to have boundaries. You can't do that. You can't come live up in my house. If you want us to live together, you need to get a dress with both of our names on it. Mm. You can't come stay up in my house. I'm not for taking care of somebody. I'm taking care of myself. You got to have your basics. We're not, new, we're not doing the moving thing if we ain't changing the last night. That's not what we're going to do. Oh, wow. Mm. She say no move in without a change name, y'all. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Girl. And that's what it's about. That's what it's about. We're wasting too much of our precious downtown. And then after it's all said and done, we want to play victim. Oh, I did this for him. And I was there for him all these years. And I did. Bitch, all you did was play a victim. You chose to stay. He showed you who he was in the beginning, and you still chose to stay. You thought you could change him. You can't change him. But that's vice versa. Now nah, let's keep the hey, vice versa. We're not that that goes right back to with that you stated with that vice versa. No. Accountability is accountability, whether you're a female or a male. Right. Same if you thing. let that's this woman saying. drag you, if you let this woman take all your money, you let this woman whore around on you, and you don't do it with her, that's on you. Because the Bible tell you that first off, oh, okay, I'm gonna go here. A man, basically, okay, the woman is the property, right? So when you go over the laws, it says that a man should not commit adultery with another man's wife, right? They don't, say you can't, they don't say a woman should not commit adultery with another woman's husband. Do it? No. Because we are the property. We are the prize. But wouldn't that be the same, though? No. no. Why no? you make that law? You see the commandments. We always, this is the problem with women. We don't want to take accountability. The Bible said it right there. It didn't say nothing about if a woman sleep with a man. It said if a man sleep with a woman. I'll do that thing. But here we is trying to embark and put ourselves in a place that we don't fucking belong. It's not a, uh, we looking at both sides. It's not a both sides thing. It never has been. We are the property. We the one that can't step out. They can't. But they just can't step out with a married man. I mean, a, a woman that's married. She fucking smoking for. Her. And if you sleep with a virgin, guess what? You got to marry her. That's why you have more than one wife. You get it now? But, but I get it. But you're speaking, you're speaking biblically. I get it. Yeah, I get it. But how many of us are really living biblically? That's the thing. We want to pick and choose what we what we do, right? So if you pray over your food before you eat it, you 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 giving you giving you know the most high his 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 right. diligence, right? Right. So that means you pick and chose what you want to do out the Bible, because it was actually to be honest, the three hundred sixty five commandments, law, statutes, and commandments, shall we say, right? But we all know about them ten, and not them ten. Are we really doing those? So I'm going to pick and choose. I want him to, you know, do and provide. But I, I'm going I'm to gaze over the rest of it. 
I'm going to graze over the rest of it. Because if I'm grazing over the rest of it, then I miss that part where he could have more than one hole. But I'm going to still sit here and tell him, oh, you got to be monogamous. The Bible told him that he can have more than one hole. Who am I to tell him he can't? But I'm bitching as hell and want him to be somebody that he cannot possibly live up to be. And then what he do with now I'm oh he hurt me because he went and slept around on me and he did it. He never told you he could do that. So but that he goes back told to you his hardest. So that's go that goes back to us putting expectations on a man. Exactly. Well, we know that they probably can't handle it. They cannot. Is what you're saying. They cannot. They are not even wired that way. They cannot. They cannot. We but I'm gonna go back to I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stick to what I said. That's not all men. Okay. Because they do have some men that have done that. Okay. Yeah. You don't what think that uncle, that uncle ain't got nothing to say tonight? What that uncle? He ain't leaving. Ah! She say, okay, got nothing to say tonight. What that uncle? <laughs> hey, listen. At the end of the day, no damn well. Okay, she say, uncle, where you at? You ain't got nothing to say. You don't want uncle no. to me to join the live because I know he you got know a lot to say about this. That they are not wired to be fucking faithful, and I don't hold it against them. Look at him. You done made him pop in. That's good. I'm glad you here, goddamn it. Glad you here, goddamn it. I'll send you an lady, invite. You want to join the live song? I'll send you an invite. He does. She doesn't want to understand that a man is not wired to only be with one goddamn woman. The world told a man he has to be with one woman. He's not wired to be that way. And the longer you expect the man to be faithful, that's how your ass end up with the feelings hurt. Well, no, no, no. To me, it's not. no, it's not that I'm not understanding what you're saying. I'm just speaking on what's going on. Like now, I'm, I'm, I mean, now, I mean, I'm seeing, I'm understanding what you're saying, but I'm speaking on what's going on now. A lot of women still don't understand that. No, a lot of women don't still understand that. And that's why they're going to be single. Because if you don't get on the bandwagon, you know how many other females that think like me that's going to get on the bandwagon? Like, and when them men realize that there are other women out there that think like me, y'all ain't going to be by y'all damn self. Right. I'm still here, Melinda. I can hear you. What you mean? Hold on. I'm still here. I'm sending Uncle Invite. Let me see if I can get it in. Damn, why my stuff? Oh, I see. Because I know Oh, got some stuff to say about this. Hold on, y'all. I'm still here, you guys. Just hold on. I just sent him an invite. All right. He should be getting it. Unc, all you got to do is um follow the directions on the invite that I just sent you through Messenger. Just follow the invite <laughs> and do what they tell you to do and come on in and I'll, I'll get you in here. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Because maybe he trying to accept the invite. I just sent it through Messenger, and it's going to tell him the directions to do. It's not hard. Just follow the directions and come on in. He team, he team iPhone, so I don't know what iPhone is telling him how to do it. Anybody else want to join the live? 
whoever watching, anybody else want to join in live? I need some youngsters to come in. I need some youngsters to come in, Melinda, so they can tell us how they feel. Because, man, I know these youngsters going to look at this and be like, man, what the? You know what Dang. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they ain't coming on here. Girl, I need some youngsters in here. I need some young babies in here. Because I promise you, them young men, I need young men to come in and really express themselves on what you're talking about right now. I wish I had they more ain't young gonna say nothing Because they yeah. said that they woman going to have something to say. Oh. Uh-oh. They ain't going to tell the truth. Ain't no man. If you ain't an alpha male, you ain't telling the goddamn truth. Like I said, you in fear of losing somebody or you in fear of them. But what you ain't finna do is tell the truth. Because if you come on this motherfucker and say, I want an extra wife, motherfucker, you scared to lose the one that you got. So, uh, no. No one's gonna come on here and be honest enough to say that. We're not in that era where they're honest enough to say, yes, I would like more than one woman. Okay. Let me see. Uh, you got it. It should. So for those that are in the room while we waiting on Unk to come up, what do y'all feel about men being monogamous? Is that something that y'all were taught to do or something that y'all can do? Because from my understanding, in the, in the Bible, it says that men biblically are not necessarily created to be faithful. Y'all are bound by more than one wife as well as if you look into the lion history or animal kingdom, those animals have more than one woman. So how do y'all feel about that, men? Do you really think you'll be awesome enough to tell your woman, I want more than one woman? Uh, uh, and why wouldn't you tell her? Uh, Is it uh, because you're afraid to lose her or are you just afraid, afraid of her? See a lot of a lot of times. See this this is this is where uh we can't hear you in there. Oh, there you go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta put you in. See this what this hold what on, hold on. Hey, Unc. Lord have mercy. <laughs> that will say Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Lord. What's up, Unc? What's going hey, what's on tonight? Thank you for hey, tapping what's in. Anyway, with us. Queen? Thank you for tapping in with us tonight. We appreciate you joining us. Now what, what you got to say, Unc? Oh man, I man, first of all, I appreciate y'all letting me in on you know what I'm saying on your podcast. First of all, man, it's on and the pleasure you did. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, um you right, you did what I'm saying. But what people get the misconception is this, you know, um men, let's not even say men wanting more than one woman. Let's say let's say this. Let let's speak on the. Are you just scared to tell your 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 your, 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 your people that you want multiple people? It's not. It's just it's just like anything else. You know, when you get in an argument, you know, it's like it's a fear factor. You know, as I said yesterday, you know, a lot of us men we've been through a lot of traumas, and a lot of us we done lost a lot of people. Everybody that came in our life, we done lost. So a lot of times we be trying to hold on to a lot of things that we have. Mm -hmm. It's not a thing that, but damn man, if you leave it, I just don't want to see you with somebody else. I, I just don't want, no, a lot of times, nigga, I just don't want to be lonely. I don't want to be left by myself again. And see, when a person say that, and oh man, I got him, or hey man, he ain't going to say this, or he ain't going to go nowhere, he ain't going to tell you the truth. Bro, a lot of that don't be true. A lot of that is, is mythical. So let me ask you this: um, Is that is that the word fear when we say that? It's fear. You said that, you said that men don't want to be alone. So is that a, fear of them being alone? Right, and a lot of times it's not a fear of being alone without you. 
It's just Thanks. a fear, period. I don't want to be by myself. Right. Being a, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I mean you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. See, a lot of times public take things, and I mean, they do. When men hear about it, just like women, it's like, man, who the hell told you women feel like that? Or told you men feel like that? That's not how men feel. Now, so far as multiple women, now you have some men, don't get me wrong, sister, they thirsty. Some gonna be thirsty their whole life. Reason why they thirsty, all they saw was their uncles, their dad, and all them thirsty. So, so it's they a generational thing. Do you believe it's a generational curse? Now, the times of today are different. The reason why it's different is because of conversations we have in now and the conversations we see on TV and on YouTube where you see the man and the woman going back and forth. We, we even seem like we don't even like each other no more. You know what that comes from? Watching our mom and dad do the same, the same thing. Watching our dad walk out the house and not come back to work. Watching mom have to go to other guys. You know, it, it's a lot of things that these kids seen, they reacted different than how we reacted. And you know, as much as I deal with young people, their main thing is, I'm not gonna live and suffer like y'all did, period. So now you got males saying the most horrible things. I remember if you, met someone and, and kind of liked them or really kind of really wanted to be with them, have a relationship with them. You know, if they had kids or even just one kid, I mean, they, they didn't mind. Hey, you know, the kid go with the package. Nowadays, hey, if I'm single, you got one kid. No. I'm not doing the baby dad stuff. Bobby did that. That's dead. You out the box. So now women got to go to a whole nother level of men. Cause these young men, they really got to jump and they can really be the foundation of them. They running from y'all. And and with the masculine that women have, yeah, a lot of them are really running far, running to white women, some turning gay, all that. Because it seems like every time we listen up, there's something wrong with the men. It's never, hey, maybe both of us is wrong. No, man, the man, the man, the man. The man, and then you wonder why you be seeing men praising each other so much. And so, to. so again, you're saying pretty much the same thing Melinda is saying because she's saying that the women are not taking accountability for their own actions and what they're doing. Man, didn't I just hear your own live with a person say, Hey, women don't apologize? What that sound like? That's like me That's coming up said. as a man saying, I don't apologize. To women. Now, what, what would be your reaction to that? But at the same time, do two wrongs make a right? No, it's it's not about that. True, true enough, but that that's not the point. The point is for somebody to even have the nerve to say something like that. But then you know what a person will say? Oh, that's how it is today. Well, no, respect is respect, no matter what time it is. Okay, so I have another question. So, in that those type of situations. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the women should take accountability and, and, and say, well, look, I apologize? Or do you believe that it should work both ways? And in my opinion, it should work both ways. But if it's not in the person that's not sincere, man or woman, don't do it. You understand what I'm saying? That goes back to women. My, my, but my thing is this, too. and Y'all may not agree. If that continues and it's the type of person that, that holds in things because they've been holding in things since they was a kid. Right. You know what the best thing to do if you're not an apologetic person or you feel like that's just something you don't have to do? You might need to find somebody else because that might not be compatible. Reason why that person needs someone just like you would. So we went back on... Oh. That's showing no care for no feelings. Now, see, when it gets to the point where we both not caring for feelings, like I told my wife, they need to send men somewhere completely else for about three or four, five years. And hey, when we put it back together, we'll see where it's at. And if it don't come back, it just won't come back. And we'll just see how everybody is. Because best believe it ain't going to go one way. Because everybody can say they, they don't give a damn. And that'll just be us. Oh, wait. 
So, okay, um, I get what you're saying. hundred percent agree. Now you touched on something. You said something that I got to go back to go ahead. because you said something about the person feeling or having a situation happen to them in their past. Now, I'm going back to the mental health issue. Great I'm job. going back to that issue, the mental health issue. Mm. Do you believe that that is the reason why some people hold on to these grudges and can't let go and can't forgive because they have been through something in their past? Most definitely. You have to think about this. It's stages when it comes to that. If you have a young kid that's maybe a newborn, and then after, you know, of course, after, you know, a, a few months after being a newborn, it may start to crawl, things like that. And you automatically, because you've got used to the baby, you maybe probably push the baby away. The baby is coming to you for it to pick it up and things like that. Right. See, that's when rejection starts. And see, we, have, see, we don't even look back that far, but that's when rejection starts. And see, you start to wonder when the kids get older while they stay in office. Mm. Why they really ain't got no friends. And why they get older and I cut somebody's head off. Wow. And Blow why they can't do out. good in a relationship because they don't know how to meditate fucking emotions. Now, I think on top of that, from what I've learned, you got a lot of men. Now, I don't even know how women go take them. You know, I talked to one of my partners about this about Excuse me. 30 minutes in East Texas, and he was telling me I shouldn't even say this because people going to take this wrong. But you know, I don't care. As long as it's saving people and it's healing people. Let's go. Talk about it like talking about well, it. See, when people be, you know, it's a thing too, and it's nothing y'all said, but it's a thing in the world people say, you know what? Men ain't got no feeling. A man is a man, and a man is a man. They're the psychiatrist and the doctor said, half the men you see in shooting, killing, and cutting people, and beating people up, and killing women and men today, he said, dog, 90% of them have been sexually abused. Yes. Did people wow. don't know anything about that? We just talked about that. We just talked about that for oh, women. Oh, we just talked about that for women. This at the men? Yeah. Is everybody thinking about that or still doing this at the men? And see, this is why the men are tired. Now you got people going in clubs saying, damn, the men ain't even talking to the women. Exactly. Now the women fussing with the women. Like, say, dog, go with that bullshit. Why? They're not saying it's just the women. I mean, of course, you got men that have done things. I understand it, but that's where forgiveness comes in. And if you haven't forgave, hey, bro, it, it sounds like you in the box. Because you got to yeah. get yourself out the box. You got to forgive yourself first. That part. We just got through saying that, right, Melinda? Exactly. You got to forgive yourself. But everybody have this macho thing. Well, shit, I ain't bowing down. But if they don't do it, I ain't. Okay, well, we going to go like that. But that don't have nothing to do with you forgiving yourself, though. Man, let me tell you something. And that's facts, what you're saying. A lot of times, dog, it's pride. Oh, that's the word we haven't talked about, Melinda. Pride. Yes. See, men used to walk with their chest out. Women sticking their titties out now. <laughs> <laughs> Big facts. <laughs> you, stay, you stand your ass up, I'm staying up, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ain't doing nothing. And yeah, you may knock me out of it, but I'm going to stand up. Yep. It ain't like that back in the day when your mama couldn't stand up. And it's like, well, hold up, bro. It's not even about all that, dog. But it's like there's some some kind of new millennium, uh, uh Generation X. Yeah. Okay, uh, not to cut you off or anything like that, but Melinda touched on biblical um things that's in the Bible. How do what? you feel about what she said about those things that's in the Bible about the polygamy and how men always had different wives and you know it would be better it would be better if a man just go ahead and tell a woman uh look I got this other chick on the side how about we get together and we just build from in uh, in a whole relationship like how do you feel about that well we all can get the bread in the house you know what I'm saying as Melinda was saying what do you think about that? So far as multiple women, let, let's go on the emotional. And we have been taught how to be monogamous when it really wasn't even taught like that from the beginning. It's well, well, first, well, first of all, let's say this. Um, we're not living by no Bible. We don't, know, <laughs> we don't know nothing about no Bible. 
Nowadays. Uh, I, I don't know the last time somebody even talked about the Bible since she said something. Wow. Uh, second you of all. You hear it every day when you hear somebody, the first thing it says, don't judge me, only God can judge me. Girl, they choose. say that all the time. We pick and Good. choose parts of the Bible that we want to hear or a heed to, but when somebody break out the parts that you do not like, now it's a problem. Thanks. Well, the problem men have with that is men, and I'm, and it's just my opinion. Your opinion. It's more a bigger percentage of men that don't believe in God than it's women. Okay. Again. Really? You really believe that? Why you say that, Uncle? Because we've been through too much. Now, the multiple women, a lot of us, we were good men at the beginning. Ah. I, that was good men at the beginning. And when certain things happen, just like women, they didn't come back. You right. got then you have buttholes that's just ripping and running, and they ripping and running because, like I said, they seen their mom and dad, you know, their mom, their dad, their uncles, and all them ripping and running. Feel what I'm saying? See, a lot of things we was taught, we gotta unlearn. Come on now, speak that. I mean, you dig what I'm saying? And and again, we go out there. Let's say for a good person that came out there good and somebody did him real bad, took all his money, or did this to him or did that when he knew he did right. Hey, man, that's going to be with that dude forever. No different than we, we have feelings, too. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. cry. Don't cry in front of you. We do, you do you believe that men are also emotional beings? Y'all have feelings, right? Y'all have feelings, too, right? So, we, but we have been men have been raised not to cry. Yes, you know, in public, say? right in front of people. Right. They didn't say don't cry in the backyard. <laughs> that part. They didn't say you couldn't <laughs> cry in the bathroom. Yeah. While you yeah, take no. you could be in there acting like you're taking a dump to go cry. <laughs> I mean, a certain way men do things, and you'll never know. Because we'll be looked at weak or mm -hmm. your emotions. I mean, and see, these things that the world have built around us and these quotes, dude, it is crazy. It's like, why are you crying? Y'all, I gotta step out for me. Y'all keep like, talking. Dude, I got tears. What you mean? Get out of my emotions. What that mean? If I feel like I can't express it, why can't anybody express it? Exactly. We have people that really believe in it. You know what I'm Exactly. I feel as though men don't have a place where they can go to be vulnerable around other men or someone, you know, a place that they can let these things happen. I mean, you know, Not let me. And, 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 and <laughs> like you pointed at today, you said men. This is a part that is not being discussed. Men are also victims of sexual assault. And we're not talking about that they're just being sexually assaulted by goddamn men. We're talking about they being assaulted by women. Yes, you talking about You think that women don't sexually abuse men? The only thing is that the men are confused about what the fuck happened. The only time that they got a problem with the shit is when it happened at the hands of another man because now it got confusion in their head. But if it happened at the hands of a woman, they just look at it. I had a notch on my belt. Shit, I fucked that old cat. Yeah, because the world makes you feel like there's something wrong. But when you get older, you realize you've been taking advantage of that old bitch and came. It's no different than a woman getting you know? raped. And it's like, damn, why I feel like this? Well, I mean, what's wrong with me? Well, why do I like this? Why? It, yeah, I mean, the day you like that, just in the middle of space. And then when you really realize what happens to you, it's like, if I say something, it ain't going to look right. Yeah. It ain't going to sound. Even if they try to tell their woman, first off, they have to worry about whether or not that woman going to look at them as weak. If that woman going to bring that shit up in a heated argument, oh, you gay because you got stuck in your booty. You know, so they don't have a place where they can and go. Look, and, yeah. and women are asking men to be emotional, but the minute that they cry from you, oh, that nigga weak. That old whole ass motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And go And we Mm -hmm. See, this is the field. Now, man, I'm going to tell you all this. 
because it's pride and all. But please believe me, a lot of these men are going through something. They're not just looking like this. They're not just getting mad with every woman. Dude, they may have a problem with women. Mm -hmm. How they, they were sexually assaulted. How many of their grandma to beat their ass the whole life? They have something against women. It's not even true. See what I'm saying? It started a long time ago. Exactly. And would you say that the reason why women and men are not getting along is because of the childhood trauma that they were inflicted, meaning by for a woman, her first love was her father. And if he walked out, now she's dealing with abandonment issues, but she don't know how to voice that in her relationship that, hey, I have abandonment issues because my father left and I don't know how to be loved by a man or vice versa. A man was raised by a single mom. Now this bitch in his face, young and screaming, motherfucker, you gonna be mm -hmm. sorry, you gonna be sorry, just like your motherfucker did. Oh. So now mm -hmm. he has his hate for women and don't even know how to say, I don't mm -hmm. like a loud mouth bitch. When you get loud, it reminds me of my mother and that makes me wanna beat the fuck out of you. And that's, and you be wondering why you even got some dudes that'll be like, hey, I'm not a kissing person. I don't like to <laughs> Whatever. You feel what I'm saying? No, you don't know what he uh, didn't been through prior that makes him feel like that. See, we need exactly. to the jump and what we think is this and that. All we have to do is that. <laughs> but see, a lot of communication. See, time has taken us from laying in the bed talking, pillow talk, to Yeah. Without, um, yeah. Without back to each other. You can be in the same house and not even having a conversation no more. Mm -mm. Come on, we used to talk there. You no, know, we don't. We didn't. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Uh, you'll never get communication and understanding. They expect to be where you at. Okay, okay. So I'm I'm back, y'all. I had to step out for a minute. Y'all excuse me. Um, so when you saying all that, um, uh, can you give us a solution on what men need to do? Because I'm hearing all of this and I'm hearing, you know, all the time. going against the grain, but what is it that we that men need to do? We know what women need to do. Uh, Melinda didn't already set it out there. We need to take our accountability for our own rea uh, own actions. So, what does men need to do? No, no, no. Or men I, don't have to do nothing. I don't agree. That's not what women need to do. I'm I not, said women. I'm not just point up. Point nothing on the women. I'm saying the women need to just pay attention, talk to their old man. Get on just like you want to understand it. Make sure both of you guys get understand it. Look, that's we right. didn't talk about the that you came with, but we need to talk because something is wrong. And don't and not, hey man, you're crazy. Look, it might be mental health. He didn't been through a lot of shit. He probably seen six people die in his hands. Okay, but yep, what I'm saying, but you have to get him to open up for you to know what's wrong. See, that's the problem. A lot of them not gonna open up because they figure, hey man, I don't know what you're gonna tell. I don't know if this gonna be spit back on me or something when, when things get rough. So hold it in. And see, that's the bad part. Cause they'll go right out here and kill somebody else mm -hmm. with the anger. And you thinking, no, he just a tough guy. No, bro, he's hiding something. And he's not letting that happen no more, whatever it was. You understand? It's a lot of things men are fighting, including each other. Okay. Like competitive. So that goes back to what I was saying. What is the solution for men to be able to handle their own problems and their own situations? What is the solution some for people, the man? Some people is no solution unless it's counseling. And some people not even counseling because it just went too far. I say that the solution is people that actually have a, a heart in their bodies and they care about other people just grab another young man and mentor him 
because we have so many young men that are fatherless. The ones that's been through it that have killed themselves, go grab a young man off the corner. But that's you know, the only way we gonna hey, rebuild him. These older guys scared, and I'm just being honest. I know they not gonna say it. Look, them niggas scared. They think is, the, and they not only scared, they lazy. Look, them kids crazy. Let them do what the hell they doing. I deal in the music industry, so I hear it all the time. Well, I go reach out and see nobody reach to these kids because they feel a certain way about them. Oh, he a fool. It is like, dude, a fool can change too, bro. He just might need somebody to talk to. You know the crazy thing about that, sis? They'll sit down there and talk to me two or three hours. I need to just met him. Like, dang, that's all he needed. Well, I don't think that's fair for somebody. We just talked about that too, the crazy and the mental issue, the mental health. I don't think that's fair for the older generation to call these kids crazy when they have some things going on in their lives that we don't know about. Give me a second. Go ahead. I don't think that's fair for us as an older generation to look at these kids nowadays and be like, oh hell, they crazy. It's something wrong with them. Well, yeah, they have a they have a mental Ill, health issue. Right. So well, you, instead of you, us doing that as um the older generation, why don't we try to figure out, like Melinda said, why don't we grab a child and talk to the child and find out what is really going on in their lives so we can help them? Uh, communication plays a, a big part in that. And that's the, that's what we have a problem with. What I've what I've seen, just like I said in the, in the entertainment business, is that the older guys don't know how to talk to the youngsters. The way they talk, it may just be it's just like a, a relationship. People pick out words that they hear and, and it pisses them off. They an older cat may say give a, a young cat some good advice and maybe bust out and say uh, after that, you know and yeah, man, uh, I just wanted to give you that advice because I knew you, you needed little brother. And see, that youngster may turn just on the little brother tip, like, bro, I'm probably about two years younger than you, bro. I'm not your little bro. A little homeboy. Well, I'm uh, AOG. I appreciate the advice, but I ain't your little, your little homeboy. So that goes back to the key words that people pull out. This is how these youngsters feel. So it's like, they won't even take any information because I'm taking in what you said, words you said that I'm not feeling, man. A little youngster, a little daddy. A, no, bro. These youngsters are different than we were. You gonna call me by my name. Don't call me no little daddy. And I ain't your little daddy and all that. And see, this is where the only young mother, just off conversation, because we don't even know how to talk to each other. We don't so we come on, we don't talk to each other. Let's go ahead and it goes right back with accountability. What we're not going to do is grace over like we didn't fuck these kids up. We is that generation that fucked these kids up. The kids that are out there right now, they came from us. They came Facts. from us. Facts. Facts. You can't be scared now. Go back and, and, and pick that child up and, 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 and correct the damn yeah. problem. Yeah. 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 like me. Yeah. Hey. hey, you done read to live, monkey. A gorilla now. Don't call the law. That's Go what pick it up. It's us. Oh, you grew up here. We created these damn monsters. We created these monsters because what's the first thing we did? We felt like our parents didn't do shit. So here we is. Oh, I'm going to give my baby this and I'm going to make sure my baby got everything. Now your baby is lazy and spoiled and ain't got no respect for nobody and don't know how to work for what the fuck they want or need in life. Because you gave them everything. Wow. <laughs> Hey, you, you can thank your government too. I'm gonna tell you something. It was great that they gave out that PPP money, but it messed up a lot of our kids. See, when you get you get young kids that can see fifty racks, seventy five, two hundred thousand back. You know, hey man, my mom ain't never had this. Hey, bro, ain't no coming back. You can't bring them down. So now that now that they be giving it, we gonna rob. Yeah. But the thing is, is that why are we gonna listen to our parents when they don't know shit? Yeah. 
They don't know shit. They in the same damn city, same town. Ain't left this motherfucker. Ain't got shit to show for it. They can't tell me what a bank account is or how to build up my credit. They don't know yeah. shit. So why the fuck am I listening to you? Then you wonder why they disrespectful. Because you not teaching me nothing. You just said and telling me what the hell you want me to do, but you're not teaching me shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see, why do I respect you? Kid. You're right. Kids. Instead of hanging out, I mean, I'm gonna look out for the fam, just like kids used to look. Oh man, you got kids on the show. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Check this out. This is a dog. I don't see that. Thing. Like, a kid, well, since you didn't do that for us, I mean, like, this whole, I don't know, there's a whole different world going on right now, bro. Like, why? But I don't you know what like. Big. I we was definitely raised differently. I'll say that. Because even though our parents didn't have everything, didn't give us the most, we are there to take care of our parents in their elderly years. I can successfully, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to say this. Most I is going to nurse him. <laughs> I is, is not fucking watching us. Our ass will be at the nursing home. Don't matter how good you was to them motherfuckers, what they ain't finna do is give up their goddamn life. Your ass going to nurse home. Wow. And on some real talk on that, Melinda, it's not just kids, dog. It's really they got some adults that feel like that too now. That too. They feel like their parents treat them like shit, so they don't want to take care of them in their old age. They, they got some wild. adults feel like that. Yes. I'm going to tell you, me and my best Melinda and, and, and Mama Fee, I'm going to tell y'all something right quick. That, and it's right along the subject y'all speaking on. I had to go do a, a few years ago, I had to go do a job in Louisiana. And the company told me, that we, want to, uh, we need you to leave this crew to clean out these two big, nice houses they want to sell. And the lady had died in it. So we need y'all to go clean it. So we went over there and cleaned it. Man, they told us a story about a lady that was so mean to her kids. They left her in there to die at her house. And wow. when I, this lady was in a wheelchair and died, peeing and dumping in a cup and throwing it through the door of her bathroom for maybe about three or four years. And we had to go clean this house up. With they nobody checking. Check mama nothing. Nobody. So yes, they all mean like that and they will let you die. That's sad. It is. They will it let I've seen it. And we're talking about adults. We're not talking about little kids. We're talking about I adults. Know. Yeah. They don't give a don't damn. Nothing. They'll, they don't hey, they'll let you know when you die. Wow. See, that's why I say all even now to my homeboys. Hey, bro, watch how you treat them kids. And kids don't forget. Mm -mm. You get old, you're going to need some help, bro. And when the kids don't like to see away from you, they ain't going to feel good. Mm -mm. It's gonna hurt. You know what I'm saying? And they ain't got nothing to do with women. I'm talking about men with that mean shit. That, man, you gotta be hard on them. Okay. One day you may need them. And see, nowadays these kids ain't the same. And they'll tell you in your face, no, I'm not. And I don't care. Yeah. The, the men, um, <laughs> the, the men that are dying alone more now than women or at least the kids will come back and try to take care of the mama but the daddy they just leaving him out there he just it, our black men are definitely dying alone but you know the crazy part about it is a lot of us want to die whoa whoa i wasn't ready for that wait a minute you gotta elaborate you have to elaborate on what you're saying the pressures that oh, I understand what that is. these youngsters have on their shoulders, like, and it's even doubled than what we had, and we had full loads of problems. Yeah, because they can't fuck up without being able to go see that shit on the internet. We could fuck up and everything. It was not recorded. No, Ain't nobody got nail tape of what the hell we was out there doing. These youngsters got pressure and mm -hmm. plus peer pressure. You understand what I'm saying? Dude, you have some city that's going to make you do certain things. See, these things women don't have to go through. You got, like, this gangbanging stuff? 
Oh, it's a lot of these guys that's getting killed. A lot, man, I guarantee you, regardless of what the newspaper and all this, a lot of them in the gang, a lot of them go jump somebody gonna look on you and make you pay. And they're gonna kill you anyway. That's just the world we in right now. You understand what I'm saying? You have to be careful as me. Because we are hungry. And not only it's real tough. And we understand. We made it tough. We understand. I, again, I'm going to go back to the accountability. Look, we got to be accountable. What we ain't going to say is, is that this is what the world we're living in. If we take our foot up, about our ass, and do what the hell we need to do, we'll have a better place to reside. Because at the end of the day, what you ain't finna tell me is that I can walk outside my door every day and in my lifetime, I don't never meet a goddamn gangbanger. But you gonna tell me because I'm a man, I gotta, everybody gotta be a gangbanger? No, what you need no, to do is change your not, goddamn I, surroundings or change the people who you deal what, with. What I'm saying is like this. Let's say you live in Los Angeles. That's where I'm originally from. Out there, really kids, I'm gonna be honest, they don't have a choice. Reason why is not that somebody's gonna grab you. Yeah, you gonna be part of the game. No, they gonna say where you from. And if you say no, hey man, I don't buy a lot. If you even forget about it, if you got something that don't want to hear that and say, nigga, you know what? Then they'll rock you anyway. Now this in you every day, and you have to walk back and forth to school. And you probably gonna get with somebody so you can get some help. If you cut, you breaking up on us. I don't know what's going on on your end. And if not, you're going to go back and probably join somebody and get some help. A lot of this is not choice. I'm not going to live out here by myself with all these monsters out here in the streets trying to prove something. I'm being approached. I'm not approaching anyone. They're approaching me with my mama, with my, mama. With my baby. With my baby. I mean, I mean, I can understand it. I mean, I've I've lived in Texas, so gang banging, oh, you hear about oh. it, but it ain't something that I encounter on a day to day life. So, I think that there are help for others if you are able to leave that surrounding. Like I tell you, right. you cannot heal where you've been hurt at. So, if this is the life that you see surrounding you, you have to, by any means necessary, get up out of there and move to a different location. Because chances are, in different states, shit just ain't the same. It, it, you see, don't have to worry about a lot of gang banking here. That's where the pride comes. Because men thing is, ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna tell you. Get that. Why would you think about dances? And you know what? A lot of them do. Well, I guess that's just the men thing. Because I'm not about to have me in no place where I'm in danger. I'm about to get the hell up out of here. Now, so far, men want to die. You have young like man. I got problems with the job. I got problems with my gal. I got problems with my mama. Man, I just got problems with my brother. That ain't nothing for me, bro. So I'm going all I don't care about nothing. And all the time, they're living for you know, they fight for you. And they don't care. My dog, all the time, I'm going to go give me a rest to get away from So I'm going to go back to the question. Take me away from my life. And I haven't heard nobody else to say that. So with everything you just named, everything you just named, Unc, all that goes back to a person having mental health issues. Yes. That is not talked about, that needs to be talked about. So for them to release all that, that is the only way that they will be healed. I mean, you, you cannot you know, the there, They go tell you, fuck everybody. You no, can you hear that? You cannot sit there and just intake all of the things that you just named, having an mm -hmm. issue with, and don't feel like you having some type of mental health problem. I know you're crazy. All that, all that relates to mental health. Oh, somebody go tell you crazy then. Oh, man, you just retarded. Oh, you crazy, dog. No, it's mental health. And that's the thing we're not acknowledging when you find someone with mental health issues that is right. a mental health issue how you was raised is causing you to think 
and stop you from pursuing how your life should be going because of a fear that is installed you from mm -hmm. childhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what's you smiling about? You completely right about that. You could take for instance, you may know men that they hit first whenever they fight. Mm -hmm. They don't care who they fight, they gonna hit, they gonna swing first. A lot of people they say, man, that dude is crazy. Yeah. You know, crazy. Cause see, you just didn't know he had four uncles. They they didn't they didn't whip him when he brought in bad report cards. They jumped on him. Oh damn. So that's a problem though. So that's a trauma. That's a yeah, that's problem a though. That will that will that will turn into a problem for a kid. Yeah. But you wonder and, why. And, and that's why I said, that's why I said they said that mental health issues usually start when a kid is 14 years old. Now so you're younger, depending on what happened. And Melinda say younger than that. Yes. Depending now you're about happened. to get jumping. He done stole three people at one time. And you wonder what people say, man, you man, your son crazy. No, he used his uncles all jumping on him at one time. And he ready. That's from that trauma. He's not crazy. He just not gonna let that shit happen no more. With nobody. Okay, so we um, hearing all this. So again, mm -hmm. what do you guys believe is the solution to help these kids? to help our relationships as women and men, what is the solution? How do we go about figuring out how to help it, to make it you better? Or is it a such don't thing? Do y'all believe that it's a such thing that things could get better in these situations? Well, hey, before we even start there, we got to realize we can't save everybody. God could. You can't help nobody that don't know the same thing. Like uh Harriet Tubman said, she said, I could have freed I could have freed a lot more slaves had they known that they were slaves. Mm. If you That's know good. that you're sick, I can't help you. Hell yeah, no. You got some young go tell you, leave me alone. So the thing is, so the thing is, the thing is finding out that you have an issue. Finding out that you have a problem in order for someone to help you. And not only that, but do you want the help when you find out that you have a mental health issue or mental health problem, right? Right. right. That is the thing. They don't want the help leaders. because it costs too much work. They don't want you to help because they probably, like you say, don't, don't believe they have a problem. Man, some and of these kids, they going to let you hug them because you're going to break their ass. Exactly. Adults, too. No, I don't want to talk. And I don't want no hug. And they don't, don't want to come out. They don't want to come out. Adults still have that problem, too. Oh, yeah. And yeah. like like Unc said, it's that pride. And pride goes before destruction. Mm -hmm. And now, it's either two, one or two things, now, sister. It's either pride or a person is just like I said, their trauma because their trauma play a big part. Their trauma keep you hurt because that's what you used to. See, if you was a kid that was going off in the corner sitting to yourself when they get pissed off, and you get older and wonder why your husband go sit in the car when he get mad, ain't nothing changed. You did okay, okay. Let's stop right there. You are along the same thing, they go get off to themselves. If he stopped talking when he was a kid, he gonna stop talking when he a dog. It okay. goes right back to trauma. <clears throat> and the child, if you were let, if you were, if one of your parents was absent, anytime you going through something emotionally, and they left you alone to deal with your emotions, you're going to do the same thing in a relationship. When you realize that I'm doing that because of my childhood, that is a trauma. I need to get some help. A lot of people don't realize that they need help. The main help, the main trauma you see in women is abandonment issues. The reason why they want to know where that man is all the time is because their daddy didn't love them. Wow. They got yeah. the tabs on Thanks. They got to make sure you're not going to leave too. Don't want to be left. See, we if you don't know that you have a goddamn trauma issue 
or a mental health issue, no one can help you. You just like, that's just how I am. I ain't gonna never change. I need to know where my man is. I'm a problem nigga. That's, good. that's not how it's supposed to go. The way you, like you said, the way you was raised. Hey, just the same as you may find a woman. Hey, it's no problem. That's because that's what she saw. <clears throat> her mom probably just let men go like that and didn't give a damn. Her aunt, her cousin, older cousin, she was watching. It depends on what we was watching. You understand what I'm saying? So if that man was watching a good person, you might find a little good dude. You just got, you got a lot of men, a lot of men who are something, dude. If you have Melinda say there is no good dudes out there. <laughs> I did not say that. I no, no, you didn't say that like that. You said you said that there were good dudes out there, but they still. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Melinda. I said just because a man cheat does not make him a bad man. Oh, only if he change. Because see, I our hearts ain't that thick, sis. I hate to tell you that, dog. We can't love more than one person, dog. Dog, a lot of that should be fantasy world stuff when you see dudes with multiple women. No, she was just fine. Man, God damn, man. Ooh, man. That's what that is. Okay, here we that, go. That ain't no dog. Let me tell you something. After them five minutes, say, man, you you gotta do they won't even think about that no more. That's all fantasy island candy stuff. Boys know where they supposed to be at. They know who they love. I hardly don't stretch that far. Okay, so you, but uh, you know nowadays that the polygamy stuff is happening. It's going on right now today. You know this. So you telling me that these men don't love these women, bro? To even be uh cooking that up in your in your mouth, no. Let me see, bro. I say, I can't sleep for everybody else, but I'm going to tell you this. Wait, wait, babe. The reason why I am for it, because I'm a woman that can take accountability for myself. I don't want to be some man's only, only outlet, only woman. I know that a man have a high sex drive. It's going to be days that I cannot fulfill his sexual needs all the time. Not just I'm saying that's going to be the reason why he cheat. So if he know, if I, if I know I can't handle everything this man need for me to be, I'm going to call in the reinforcements. I need some help. And that's being real. A lot of women ain't going to be real enough to say that I am not enough woman for this man. Because one thing is that I might look at this man like, okay, he just told me his soft spots. He wants somebody to talk to. And I might not be able to step there, but the next one will. That ain't a reason that I should lose my man. Oh, you, you gonna lose him, though, sis. You gonna lose him because I'm gonna lose him whether he go to the next woman or I bring a woman. Mm, depends on the dude and depends on the relationship you got with him, sis. Man, if you and your dude just good like that, bro, bro, you got some dude that's so good to their old ladies so they feel like their old lady so good to them. Dude, you bring a threesome or something to them. That don't mean nothing. That'll just be that. They'll be back to you. I now, didn't sell threesome. I don't do girls. I mean, I, I'm just saying, however, you talking about a dude, they'll probably do that once and come back home. Everybody's not just swinging themselves like that. You know what I'm saying? Like people think. Now, we talked that good stuff. Yo, man, three or four last night. Oh, dude. That's a big real. Man. So what you're saying is um, that not all men is like thinking like that. Hell no, dog. A lot, a lot of that is eye candy, dude. And if you see dudes having sex with a bunch of chicks, a lot of times he ain't liking all them chicks. He just thought she was fine that particular day. Man, I just had to have that with and then for a nigga that got stuck. That's all. Okay, but that means you going out there cheating and you not telling your, your spouse about it or your, your girlfriend about it. No, you and don't. now that person gonna have to find out a different way. And what Melinda's saying is, why do all that? Well, you can just come talk to me and I can invite her in and then we can be like getting money together. We all, you know, getting money together. Like, why do all that? Why hurt a person where you could just be 100 with a person? Because you never know what that female might be thinking. She probably like, yeah, let's go. 
Okay, well, how about for the times when you piss me the hell off, super hell off? You gonna fight it over then? What'd you say? Wow, boy, that's but well, you could have heard a boss for it just now. No, I didn't hear what you said. Repeat it, please, for the people to know. We got audience or not, but go ahead. What'd you say? Well, said again? You know, in relationships, you have your your scrapes, your scraps, then you have your monster argument. Now you saying about inviting somebody over. Now, how about when you didn't piss me all the way off. I'm talking about to the fullest. Is she still invited over? No, 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 that's, no, no. You can the 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 no. You if getting a misconception is, of what I'm saying. If, if I'm bringing another woman in, that's your second wife. So Right, that's what I was going to say. Mean, you getting you a misconception okay of what I said by Look, bringing a woman in. Wife. That's saying I'm, you the right to just get up and leave the house and go be with somebody I don't fucking know. Well, you know what? I, I, uh, uh, hey, Queen, that ain't gonna work. It, you know, it, I'm, a, I'm lying. Baby, it is working like that. It, what do you it, mean? It, they got a it, bunch of people doing that nowadays. It will work for some men, but very few, Miss Melinda, because right. a lot of us are greedy. I'm just being honest. A but your greed is getting fed. Are not the alpha men that they think they are? Because, like I said in the beginning, if you can't tell a woman, first off, you can't tell a woman. Before you break her heart, because what cheating does to a woman is this. It makes her feel invalidated. It makes her feel little. It makes her self-worth diminish. She looking at herself like I'm not good enough. So if now we know it's another woman here, I can keep my goddamn sanity and my pride. I know I'm only, I'm not even battling with her. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in collaboration with her. I'm not going against her. I'm not made to feel less than. I know who the fuck he's fucking beside me. So I ain't got to worry about him going over here. I ain't got to worry about him going over there. But when you go out there and cheat, now you the told out everything in me, but you want to come and tell me that you love me. Just tell me the truth. I can respect you. I don't know about that. Uh, uh, wow, that's deep. I, 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 I don't know nothing about saying, you know, dude, how we uh, I don't know about how we loving each other. And all that. Again, I say, a man is not going to necessarily tell us because society has made him believe that he should only be with one woman. And if he tell his woman, I want to have more than one hole to go in, he is afraid to lose her or he afraid of her. That is the only reason why he's not going to be honest enough to say it. Now, he will sneak the fuck out there and cheat and hurt your damn boy. Now you got to repair yourself. Tell her roll her hand up or something. Hit round. See? Up. Uh, stop. <laughs> you don't need another woman. Say, just, uh, hey. Up. Uh, stop. Do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got this. They've been having that hand for years and it still ain't stopped them from going out there and finding another hole to dig. Yeah, you play, you play with a lot of feelings though, uh man, Melinda, because Yes, I, it is a lot of feelings involved. You don't know. And, that's, might, and listen, might, Unc, might, and listen, yeah, Unc, listen, this is why she said just come talk to me and we might can work some things out because you don't know how I'm feeling. I might want to please you and let's do this. And we work together, and it can be uh uh. Yeah, that crazy man, nigga. And then when oh you my God. and then when you gonna leave and do what you do, nigga, don't That's the thing. Nigga. nigga, please. He gonna vice versa. Remember, <laughs> I was saying vice versa, my nigga. He nigga. gonna and, vice and, versa. And, and that's why you the know men, the, the minute she did, they're not being not, honest. But you doing it anyway? Wait, y'all be quiet. What? What you saying? They're not being honest. And they're not being understanding. See, first off, when you get to that level of grownness and you could come to a woman, not a girl, but a woman, this is what's going on. That woman has the right to say, I'm on board or I'm a jump ship. Now, most women in our rightful age and mind right now understand that we are under a war. It is not enough men for the women. So am I going to continue to be single or am I willing to to build with this man and this woman to have something so that I can have a piece of man versus no man at all? Mm. Mm. But who want a piece of man? But no, 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 no. You sell me for a know. piece of man yes. when you own it a side piece anyway. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
if they are building together in a household, y'all, it's not a piece of man. Well, you know what I mean. Stay no, 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 I'm listen. I didn't see poly pol polygamous yes, relationships. I didn't see people in polygamous relationships. Well, y'all know what I'm saying. And yeah. it's more to just yeah, you right. being him being a piece of man. Everybody is bringing something to the table, Melinda, like you said, right? Right. Well, everybody I'll, brings something to the table. So it's not just man. I'll say, uh, I I don't mind sharing my man to ensure that I have one. But you only sharing him if if that that person is in the household with y'all. Exactly. Now, exactly. if they're outside of the household, that's a different thing. Now you're cheating. Now, now that's when I have all these insecurities about myself building up. Yes, that's cheating. a yes. It's a different thing. It's a different story when you're talking about you going outside the household. Now, when you're in the household, let's do it. Hey, we wait till we both for that. Baby, it's, it's happening, is what I'm no, telling you. I, I said she can do it. I said you may have something that can do it, but no, it's men that's doing it. It's men that's accepting that and they loving that. Like, yeah, I got my gal, I got both my wives right here. They're not tripping. We all making money, we stacking bread, like we supporting, we providing for the household, the kids. I didn't see it. So what y'all been smoking? <laughs> you know what? What you been smoking? <laughs> uh, no, you know this. You know what? I, I'm gonna tell you. Saying you got Miss Melinda on there. See, Miss Melinda got that sneaky look. I'm gonna tell you something, dog. This feel like y'all got a box. You, you ever see Tom and Jerry when they hold up that box? They got a stick up on it. I don't know. But what is your point? But it is, this, I mean, this is so man. This is a this is a weird conversation, man. Like because first of all, as I say, us is not a lot of time. We don't know how to talk. So when you saying come to me and say this, of course we'll say a bunch of extra retarded stuff and all that. And yes, we gonna be excited by that. But dog, really. Who are you then with these two women? I mean, how can you be you and have two women, dog, and just stand with you and stuff? The same and way you was you when you were sitting on your you woman. Doing? You were keeping the wrong side of secret and doing this over here. What you mean? It's the same thing. You're just not a secret no more. Was you on steroids when you was going outside the house and do it? Man, that nigga must be. Think of that nigga must I'm be. trying to get an understanding of what Uncle's okay, saying right now. Boy, what hey, you man. Some extra? Like, one woman is a whole lot. I one mean, man I was going to do it. Yeah, it's a lot of now men that have two of them nowadays. Try to please one goddamn man. Y'all are a lot. Your sex drive is over the top. Yes, but then you got two vibes against one, too, in that house. Well, I don't know about that, neither. We no, just you're, not gonna, you're not you're not about to wear me out. You better go to her and her night. I need a night out. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I cannot. Audience, y'all forgive us because we are talking about it like talking about no, it. No, I need tonight. a night out. No, I don't no. Right. Uh, yeah. It's her turn. It's her turn, fool. Y'all, we are talking I'm about it. Let's talk about it tonight. So, to uh, night. whoever has ever tested in, we are over the time limit. Melinda, you said at the hour. Yeah, we over the hour, my nigga. We going on three hours again. See, that's what I told you. I don't know. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But these, this is look. We doing a lot right now, y'all. So I hope everybody go back and look at the video because I we need y'all opinions. We need y'all to tap in, make comments on this goddamn live right here. Go share the live, go like the live, and y'all most definitely make the comments. I, damn I most definitely want to hear what other people has to say tonight on this topic, and it's a hot topic. Yes, and I will be going live again on Eminem Straight Talk tomorrow, y'all. So I'm just letting y'all know the, 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 the topic, the subject will always continue. Umpton burnt off. He said, I'm out of here. 
He's nasty. He's I'm so out of here. I'm good. Said. But I, it goes back to me proving what the hell I just said. No man is going to be honest enough to say, I want more than one woman because they're afraid of losing their woman or they're afraid of their woman. That's because they don't communicate. Instead, they feel like it's a trick instead of, the, you know what I'm saying, their brother go and fuck up home and hurt her because they're scared that us having a conversation about where our life is going is a trickery because it doesn't sound the way that you think society it should it should look. I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure that I'm good. You're not killing my self-esteem every time you go fuck a new bitch. <laughs> How you say that I fall out laughing. Girl, get the hell out of here. Right. I feel what you said now. Like, goddamn. But look, man, I'm still trying to get to the solution. I mean, I've been said it like three or four times. Like, I'm hearing all of it. I thought Uncle was gonna come with some solutions, but he came with some <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> Okay, with some other stuff. He always do. Uh, but I mean, I mean, it's crazy because what do we do? How do we handle the situation? And I know you said um uh, shut the hell up as far as the women. Shut the hell up, listen to your spouse, um, see, you know, pretty much see what. He requires and you he see what you require and that might bring a better situation as far as the kids man um if everybody's scared to talk to the kids the kids is gonna be who they are they're gonna be the same way they are that's why these kids kill nice exactly so if we're afraid to talk to the kids the kids are gonna be who they are because no one in one wants to talk to them they feel like they're crazy or something no they just need some guidance they need somebody to talk to, you know, because maybe they're not getting it from home. You know what I'm saying? So if another person can step in and talk to a child, man, do it. Don't wait till they turn 15, 16 years old and think you for to talk to them because now they think they grown. So yeah. don't wait that long. If you can grab them at a young age when they babies, grab them then. Mm hmm grab them then and talk to them so i mean that's just a lot to me i mean i don't know melinda but it was an awesome show tonight <laughs> even though Uncle felt like he was set up but no yeah. he don't because he already know how we talk he, we talk like this he, we do this all the time this is nothing for us <laughs> we talk like this all the time it was just you, you are extra woman. But you, I love you gave your opinion on it and how you feel about it. So it, it, it was really good. I love that. And I was trying to get a I'm trying to get Cookie in here too, but she didn't want to come in because she's a younger baby. You know what I'm saying? And I was trying to get her in and EJ. EJ here too, y'all. And he ain't got his phone. I was trying to get him in too, y'all. But he ain't want to come in. I ain't got my phone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get everybody. I'm like, let's go. Let's talk about it. Like, talking about it for real, for real. But it was awesome, Melinda. Girl, we have been here 237. You said yeah. it's only going to be an hour tonight. Yeah, I did say that. Now I'm going to go take my butt to bed. Shit. That yeah. part. And I enjoyed it, girl. Um, Thursday, what's up? What we got? Um, Thursday, I think that what I want to do is. um. I guess either Monday we'll talk about everyday stuff like we talked about today. Um, but on Thursday, we'll talk about business. Like we need to really start helping people get these businesses up off the ground. Just going through and showing them how to, uh, you know, the first thing as far as getting their name, checking the, the website to see if their name is available, going in, getting them an email address, um, going in and, you know, getting their EIN number, all of the necessary first steps that you would take to begin a business because we got some entrepreneurs and it's time to show them how to go ahead and conduct business. Okay. Okay. If they didn't catch the first show, because that was what our first show was about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you didn't catch the first show, we're going to bring it back Thursday. 
So I hope everyone tap in to see what we're going to talk about Thursday about bringing the businesses. If y'all entrepreneurs, Melinda's going to hit y'all up again and let y'all know how to do it. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Including myself. I keep saying that, but I need to learn too. So we're going to do it like that. And um, we're going to keep it a G, keep it 100. Y'all know I'm ghetto fine. I told y'all that last show. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna keep it 100 and yeah we hope y'all tap in man melinda girl it's late i know you need to go to bed but it was a great show tonight i thank my co-host miss melinda robinson hey thank you girl you hey we about to come up on this like talking about it buddy <laughs> we gotta start sharing man we gotta get more people in uh i don't know what to do to get more people in but we got to start doing it in a different way to get more people in, dog. This is live. I love it. I'm going to try to figure out how to take some snippets from our show and put them up as reels. And right. hopefully that'll bring some people in. Mm. I'm going to try to do that, too. I'm going to do some research on that and see how we can get it in. I've been, okay, I think I think I posted. I need to post our last show on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to post this one tonight. I haven't did it, but I need to do that. And um, I'm going to get that going on YouTube. And I know people probably going to watch this one, though. This one was a little fired up. They're going to have their opinions. <laughs> Dude, the thing is, I'm connected to the Eminem Straight Talk, right? Mm-hmm. But I, on my own, like talking about the page, I can go on StreamYard. I can go live on YouTube and Facebook. But since I've connected my page with the Eminem Straight Talk page, I only have them, the Eminem Straight Talk page. So I'm telling her, like, set up the YouTube page where we can go live on YouTube. Yeah. So then we need to set up this, the two for a family. I don't know what the hell you waiting on. We need to set that up. Yeah, we do. And once you set that up, I'm going to see how I can go in on the stream yard to uh, be able to connect it to the YouTube and the Facebook. But we're going to have to go on one or the other. I don't know. They don't let us do both of it at the same time. So maybe you can do one on your uh, tablet or your phone. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then we yeah. do a, another one on the, you know, but as long as everybody's watching. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to have to figure that out. That's some more work. Y'all know I'm still new to this technology stuff. <laughs> But anyway, let's go ahead and do the outro so we can get up out of here. Yeah, we have two to a family, too. That's me and Melinda also, y'all, just to let y'all know. So if y'all see uh, two to a family, yeah, she needs to set up that Facebook page. I don't know what the hell she waiting on. Uh, Yeah, once she set I'm that up. I'm planning away, that. that's what the hell I'm doing, okay? We ain't got to do that on, like, we ain't got to do it on, like, talking about it. We can do it on two to the family, two to a family. So, yeah, once she set that up. <laughs> we can get that going too let's go yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying so but anyway yeah yeah we for the end it thank you guys for tapping in thank you guys for watching thank you for your likes your comments your shares and if you didn't you need to go back and do it okay and peep out the video all right and we're all signing right. out tonight y'all we didn't have a great conversation we was all over the place tonight y'all yes we went all over the place so I hope everyone tuned in. If you didn't, go back and watch the show. You feel me? So me and Melinda, uh, no, sorry. I'm signing out, a.k.a. Mama, Mama Fee, 45 Live, with my co-host. Melinda, I'm signing out. Good night, y'all. All right, y'all. We do sit out. Hugs and kisses, always. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I got to do my peace out. Peace out. Good night, girl. Bye, my baby. <laughs> <laughs>